already will uh, just allow the people to come on in as they can. So, uh, Diane, if you want to uh, uh, take the roll, please. Okay, Karen. Here. Okay, Carolyn. Here. She's Diane. No, here. Yeah. Here. Patty. Here. Linda. No. Tim is here, and here. Sue will see. He's still trying. Still trying. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to try my flag again. Oh, I have to share the screen. Share screen. Uh, uh, Susan, can you uh, uh, enable the screen sharing, please? Uh, um, Sue's here. I, thought I already, okay, I just believe Sue is a panelist, so we've got that. Okay, um, so. Share screen. Uh, I can do that. Thanks. Okay. Great. There she is. There she is. Uh, all righty. All right. Nice job, Tim. Great. All right. Thank you. Just time I didn't show password or anything. All right. Uh, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. So where we are, uh, oh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone seems to the flag of the United States of America. United States of America. And to, and to, the to the Republic for which, which it stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. Under God. Under God. With liberty and justice oh, and for all. For all. For all. Very good. Uh, very nice. Thank you so much. Uh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You're away. You're gone. Uh, uh, nice know. banner. I like that. There we go. Sorry. Um, all right. So I don't have to share screen, and I should stop sharing screen, right? Ah, where's that so how thing? do we get rid of the flag? I, I know because I'm trying to. Stop sharing screen. I can't. The no, no. Oh, here, stop sharing. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Here you go. Very good. Very good. Very good. Next time, I'll just bring a little flag. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be clever, I suppose. All right. Uh, so next, oh, we have fine. the approval of minutes. Everybody here, Sue. Excuse me. Sue. Before you, can I ask a question before you go to that? Sure. Tussie Spadoni, since this is a um, virtual meeting, is it possible that maybe we could announce who is present, like maybe other residents or staff members? I noticed in the minutes that there were several people at our previous meetings, but I didn't know that. So does someone know who's, who's participating? Yeah, you have a thing on the bottom of your screen that says participants. And if you click on that, it will tell you who's there. And there's panelists on so one we, side and these on the other. Do we want to announce them or no? Or I can, I just have to look. I just lost you. Uh, yeah, actually, Carolyn, the only people that are on right now are, is everybody you see. We have no other participants other than uh, people here. Okay. So. There's, but there's some I, attendees. I, oh, crap. Uh, the other list, just a sec. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. I'm back. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, I have no problem announcing them. This will probably be our, our last Zoom meeting anyway. So uh, we've I got. Know. A, Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. We've got a Kate Levinson, uh, Cindy. I don't know who that is. Just one name, Cindy. Uh, Cindy. Okay. We've got. Oh, people are dropping off. Uh, Carolyn, maybe we don't want to do that because people are dropping off as soon as I started to run it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. Most people didn't like that. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, back to our meeting. Uh, we've got the approved uh, the minutes of the virtual board, uh, virtual regular board meeting of mm -hmm. April fifteenth, twenty twenty. Can I hear a motion to approve that meeting? Uh, the minutes. So move. Motion. motion. Eddie made a motion. Second. Second. Second, great, Diane. All right. Uh, do we have any okay, comments? The motion. It was uh, Patty made the motion. Okay, thank you. And uh, Diane seconded it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay, we're getting right. some feedback, so I'm going to mute everybody. Unmute yourself when you need to talk, okay?
Okay, I'm unmuted because I need to talk. Okay, um, let's go around the, uh, the, 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 uh, our board and see if anybody has any uh, issues or, or updates on that minutes. Uh, Diane, you do you go first. I need Diane to unmute. Susan, do you need to unmute Diane or can Diane? Everybody's unmute? on mute right now. She has to unmute herself. I can unmute her. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Go. Okay. No, nothing wrong with April 15th minutes. All right. Uh, Carolyn, unmute yourself, please. Yeah, just done. Yeah, it's fine. Carolyn, got anything on these minutes? I do, actually. Um, I had a question about um, for public comments. I believe this was the meeting where there were some chat questions and answers. And I was um, wondering if they would be included in here because I don't see them. I, I think I got an email from you, Susan, but I don't have it in front of me. But um, should that conversation be also part of the minutes? Yes, you're right. They probably writing. should be. Yeah, there. I mean, there wasn't really a chat, but there was a Q and A. There was a question in the Q and A. So yes, you're right. We should add those back in. Okay. Thank you. And then um, I had another question. Oh yes, um, on the. I don't know if it's in the email we received or on the website. It says um, details are available on the video recording of the board meeting on the library's website under public comments. I've been in and out of there all week long. So have other people. And you end up choosing the agenda, um, but you cannot select an agenda item and then go to the video. And it doesn't take you to YouTube. It takes you to the original screen that shows all the board meetings by date. And then you could click on the agenda. And then you go to a new screen like it's black and white and it asks you and it shows you that you could click on the agenda but you never get to the video and the agenda line items don't take you to the video so could we look into that we can we we uh our board book has upgraded and we've been completely migrated to a new system and so this was diane's first time putting it in the new system so it is possible there are some oh. things that are not working quite the same way. So we will definitely check that out. Thank you for letting us know. Okay, you know what, you're right. I did end up on the board book site and then I just got out right. of it. Okay, thank you. Well, right. That is the board book is where you find the video. Oh you, no, it was like one. behind the scenes I ended up. So okay. I just got out. We'll uh, check into it. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, let's see. Um, regarding the lending regulations, page four, I would like to motion to add a copy of the administrative policy 305 lending regulations in this section of the minutes. You want to add the actual regulation into the minutes? Yes, because it's what we discussed and it is what the subject is about. I thought it should be included. Um, I, I'm sorry, Carolyn, but I, I disagree because we never, we never actually put regulations or, or uh, it's doc documents in the immediate minutes. It's a policy. And when you've made policy changes in the past, you have never attached them to the minutes. Yeah, we never, you no. certainly but could agree should, to do that. Yeah, that's just so my then, opinion on that. So, so if, if a resident was reading the minutes and wanted to go to this what would he do go to the agenda item to see the attachment is that i mean i'm just asking what the procedure is i just thought it should be there but if you don't think so it's just well carol we've never we never keep we never put documents in the minutes i know but the point is if you're that's well, true we'll never have it doesn't it make it it doesn't make it flow though so i'm asking if in the minutes, there was this, um, what is it called, um, sorry. Oh, lending regulations. If it, I just want, if somebody's reading this and wants to see what the lending regulations are, they're not gonna know to go to po the policy and procedures. So they should just go back to the agenda, click on the item and it would be there, is that it? 
the previous month. Correct. Yes, the agenda for that meeting. Correct. Okay. Can you still hear me? All right. It it just seems to be questionable, but it's just my my input. Okay. And then there was another one. Um, page four, elevator repair. Repair. Um, I motion to add on line three. Um, Trustee Derblick requested a copy of the cone detailed equipment evaluation, the basis of their proposal. That was a request I made. Am I hearing a second? Uh, sorry, Carolyn, I'm not hearing a second on that. Okay, um, will my... Um, Motions for a, for change be in the minutes or are they going to be excluded? Will anyone know no, I, I made these motions? That would not normally be what's done, no. Because okay, it's a record the next of what's one. done. It's board action. Okay, the next one is page four. Resolution 20-01, middle of line one. I motion to correct the sentence, middle of... Um, a resolution authorizing the payment of continuing expenses. And I want, and what I wanted was to add by Director Lemke without board approval. Is that the title of the resolution? I don't think it is. It's no, the, um, the, the, the explanation of the resolution, it kind of dropped off. It doesn't say what it, what it is. Well, and, again, um, you'd have to go back to the agenda then. Of the previous no, no. Meeting. This was the statement that was made in the meeting, and if you read the sentence, it just kind of stops. So we need okay. to, the public. You, you gotta, anybody to know seconding what this that? Is about. I hear you. Anybody seconding that motion? Sorry, we're not getting a second on that either, Carolyn. So we're saying we don't want the public to know the purpose of this resolution because it's not listed in the minutes. Why would you not define Carolyn, it was not that seconded. Not resolution? That, motion is, yeah, that motion has not been uh, seconded. Right, none of them so are being seconded, but if we don't put the facts in the minutes, that doesn't make sense. Okay, Carolyn, do, you have any other, do you have any other? Um, Great, uh, Patty. Any updates on these minutes? I have one more. Uh, okay, Carolyn, you said you wanted to move on. I, I have one more to the next right. one. Page four, resolution 20 well, Carolyn, one Carolyn, 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 Carolyn. We're not on the next minutes, I we're on these minutes. I can hear you screaming, continue. I know, I have well, one more. Thank you motion regarding these minutes. on these minutes or the next one that's not what you said you said on the next these one. i think well, go. all right i, I have a list i'd like minutes. to go from one to the next oh. okay page four resolution 20-01 i motion to add line three the March 18, 2020 board meeting was canceled due to the pandemic. All March 18 checks were mailed by Director Lemke without board approval. Do we have a second on that motion? Not seeing a second, Carolyn. Okay, that's all I have on these minutes. Thank you. Great. Patty, do you have anything on these minutes? Not really. Thank you for yes. asking. Uh, Karen? No. Uh, Linda? No. No. Sue, any updates on these minutes? I'm good. No. Good. All right. Uh, Diane, would you take a uh, roll, please? Karen? Yes. Karen? Carolyn? Mm -hmm. She needs to unmute herself. Carolyn? Here, if we could, yeah, can you, do you mind 
there's no one here making any noise. Could we just leave it on mute? On, on mute? Because I'm busy writing. Sorry. No, I'm not approving. Thanks. Diane. Diane, Diane um, in the right hand corner. Diane, Diane upper. Here you go. She's Diane, uh, yes or no? No, she's not muted. Right uh, yes, if you could hear me. Diane, you're unmuted. Diane. Still unmute. Okay. Yep. I can't yeah. do anything. Okay, I don't have a screen. Diane, yes. we can hear you though. So, Patty, are you voting yes or no? Yes. Okay, Linda? Tim? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. And Sue? Okay. So. Yes. Oh, okay, thank Great. you. All right. Um, um, now we're on the uh, second, uh, the minutes of, uh, sorry, any minutes. Uh, um, okay. Now I hear the, the motion to approve the minutes of the virtual special board meeting of May 11th of 2020. Anyone want to make motion. the motion? Motion. Daddy does. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, second. 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 Well, Karen will second it. All right, we'll start again. This is going to be a very long meeting. All right, um, Diane, we'll start with you. Any updates to this uh, minutes? No, no updates. No. Well, great. Carolyn, no. uh, I got any updates on these minutes? Was that a no, um, Carolyn? Yes. Oh. There was a no. Yes. Eddie, any updates? Can you not hear me? Okay, Carolyn. Can you not you, hear me? It's it's pretty it's staticky. It's hard to hear. Um, I, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Carolyn. Okay. Yeah. The same issue um, with the agenda items on this uh, on these uh, on this uh, on these minutes as well. You weren't able to go from the agenda item to the uh, video. I just wanted to point that out. Uh huh. And then under new, then under new business. Um, line three, discussion of abating the property taxes. I motion to add following the period. Trustee Derblick stated after review of expenses, the library could comfortably abate $2 million. We hear a second. Not seeing a second on that, Carolyn. That motion did not pass. <laughs> Uh, it, it was not seconded. All right. Um, I have a, I was going to um, make a statement. I don't know if this is the time. Um, I want to go on record requesting that the three levy uh, abatement documents received by the trustees be included online in the agenda packet item for the May 11th special board meeting. I would also request an explanation of Greg Tritz's abatement cash flow be included. I'm sorry, Carolyn, is this an update to this, these minutes? So can I state that here since it's part of this motion or since it's part of this uh, subject or do you want me to do it later? Uh, I think later because it doesn't sound like you want to make a change to these minutes. So when do I bring up the issue that the documents aren't on the agenda? Uh, well, that would have been when the agenda was first sent out. Well, I wouldn't know that. I know now they're not there and I'm requesting they be placed there. So do you wanna tell me when I'm I- sorry, you want, you wanna make a change to the, the agenda for this current meeting? Regarding the abatement, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, the, I'm, I'm, let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm, I'm confused as to what you want. Do you want to make a change to the, the agenda for this current meeting or to the minutes for the last meeting? 
I'm referring to the May 11th meeting. Yes. So you want to make yes. a and change to that agenda? The documents. Pardon me? Um, this is really bad. We're, yeah, uh, what, we're know, not doing as good today. Not, no, this is very bad. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why it's everything's so choppy. Um, Mine is fine. Good, good, thank you. Good, good. Somebody says. Good, Tim, right. you talk and I'll wait. You okay. talk so, so I can hear what you're saying. Right. Go ahead. Okay. So what I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm not understanding is, I don't know. I'm not understanding if you want to make a change to the minutes of the May 11th meeting, or if you want to make a change to the agenda of the May 11th meeting. Well, that's, it's the agenda and I didn't know when to interject that. So just okay. let me know. Right. I'll do, should I do it well, later? You, you can interject that later, but we can't make a change to the agenda for a previous meeting. That cannot be done. Well, in, this, in the spirit of transparency, all the documents we receive have to be included in the agenda packet. Well, they're not there. Okay. Uh, Obviously, let's, let's talk forgot. about it later. Okay. All right, good. Let's okay. talk about it in the other because that's not a change to these minutes. All right, Patty, do you have any changes to these minutes? No. No, great. Karen? No. Linda? No. No. Sue? No. No. Any changes? No. Okay. Diane, please call the roll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. All right. Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Okay, Patty? Yes. Patty, are you there? Okay. Linda? Linda? I'm sorry, Patty I wasn't said, have yes. 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 Okay, Tim? Yes. Tim, how do you vote? And yes. Sue? So we'll see. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, now we have the public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, we'll remind all uh, people who want to make public comments that the, uh, each comment is limited to three minutes. It is a comment and not a public uh, question and answer period, nor a public debate. The uh, trustees and the executive director may uh, answer, uh, may make a short statement or answer a question uh, just upon their um, uh, desire to do so, but they are not required. Uh, the public comment period in total is limited to 30 minutes. Uh, and we will obviously not broke any uh, profane language or abusive um, uh, comments. So, uh, Diane, do we have anybody on couple of comments or Susan? Not that I know of, no. I, I did not receive any in advance. I don't know if any of the attendees would like to speak. Uh, I don't know how we find out. Uh, we have a hand raised. Steve, Mr. Hand raised. would like to speak. Steven, yourself. I, yeah. Right ahead, Steven. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. I was in earlier with my comment, but uh, I'll read it out now uh, since I'm here. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So good evening, Niles, Maine Library Board and staff. Uh, it, it is good to see that our library board was able to work together at the special board meeting to reach a decision on the $1 million tax abatement. 
Thank you all for that discussion and your teamwork. I've been curious about the library's subscriptions to computer apps and programs and how those have been operating while the library has been closed. I understand that many of these programs and apps are on yearly subscriptions. With some, such as the Adobe Creative Suite, they are assigned spe specifically via serial key to public computers located inside the library and can't be as accessed remotely or run multiple instances. Is there a way for the staff that looks over these operations to contact the respective customer service representatives to negotiate rebates due to lack of use until the library is operating at 100% again? I hope these thoughts are considered and could be one of many solutions that the library can look into with reducing excess costs while the building is physically closed to patrons. Thank you for your time as always, and uh, looking forward to the rest of the meeting. Uh, Stephen, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any specific questions, you can send them off via email to uh, our executive director, and I'm sure she can get you an answer on those. Um, and I'm not Thanks, seeing Steve. any further. Yep, I'm not seeing any further hands. So uh, it looks like our public comment portion is over. So thank you very much. Uh, next item on our agenda is our treasurer's report. Uh, Patty or Greg, whoever is providing it, please. Okay. That's me. That's me. That's me. Give me a second to flip to the page. Okay. Um, April is the 10th month of the fiscal year. Can you hear me? Right? Okay. Of the fiscal year, we're 83% of our way through the year. The budget, the libraries, uh, overall expenditures are 62% of the budget at 83% of the total budget. Uh, page eight, revenues total, uh, revenues are 104% of the budget. Property taxes, 103% of the budget, fines, 83% of the budget, investment income, 160% of the budget, salary, which uh, is 82% of the budget. Page nine, library materials are at 75% of budget. Within the page. <laughs> Libraries operating expenses are at 64% of the budget. Uh, page 10, general administration, 74% of the budget. Page 11, employee fringe benefits are under budget at 76%. Total utilities at 83% of the budget. Uh, capital expenditures, 10%. No, you're doing good. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. Page 12, uh, building and equipment maintenance is at 60% of the budget. Total expenditures is at 62% of the budget. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Thank you, Patty. Uh, does anybody have any comments on the treasurer's report? Oh, great. Uh, next we have, uh, I make a motion to approve operating expenses of $235,689.38, payroll expenses of $285,000, $211.51 for total monthly expense of $520,900, I'm sorry, 
$500,900.89. Uh, do I hear a second on that motion? Second. Uh, Karen seconded. Um, Sounds good. Diane, Diane, you want to take a... Uh, oh, no, oh, no. Um, uh, do we have any comments or uh, discussion on this? Uh, uh, Diane, anything? No. Carolyn, do you have anything on this? Yes, I do. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, I had a question. Um, this would be to Susan. Have there been any payments processed under the resolution 20-01? No, there have not. That was only in the case that the board was unable to meet. The board is approving all bills this evening. That, that, that was the only condition under which I would be paying bills is if the board was not available to approve them themselves. Okay. Um, and um, I had another question. At the last board meeting, you mentioned that um, we were holding on to checks for programs that have been canceled because of the pandemic and your staff was uh, renegotiating some online programs. And I was wondering what the status was of those checks. Do you feel they're, they've already been um, reassigned for programs? Are we still holding on to them? Do you know? I don't believe we're currently holding on to any. I believe that they all have um, either been rescheduled for fall or just, um, or been renegotiated. I've signed several renegotiated letters of agreement. So I, I think that everything is clear. I cannot swear it though. I did not check on it before the meeting. Well, that's okay. My only concern is, you know, last year our auditors um, brought to our attention about how we had some uncashed checks and with everything that's going on, we just didn't want to end up back in that situation. So I just wanted to bring it up. Um, but um, I'm sure you're keeping a handle on it. I just don't want to end up hearing that we were back there. So that's why I brought it up. But thank you for that. Um, let's see. I did have a couple of questions about some of our monthly expenses. Um, I was looking at AT&T and I realized we have an AT&T service charge and we have an internet charge. But then I also noticed that technology management is also someone who provides internet connections. Is, is there a reason for this? We have multiple internet connections. We have a pub, one for public, one for um, the staff computers. It's two different setups. Okay, okay. Are there more than two, do you know? I haven't found any others. I don't think so. Greg might okay. know. Uh, I believe there's only two. Okay, so it's public or staff. That's that the, this the distinction. Okay, great. Then I also noticed that um, we have a monthly telephone charge from call one. Who's that? Uh, they provide uh, our telephone service. Okay, so we. Um, we pay them almost $3,000 per month for phone service. So what happened with them is that um, there was a little bit of a change in the billing. Our account rep uh, left that company and allowed our contract to expire. Once the contract expired, um, they, uh, they, sent, they started sending us like really big bills um, I don't know how to describe it, except to say it wasn't under contract. Um, we held on to those bills and did not pay them until we could get a new account rep and get it straight. Uh, this $3,000 payment or whatever it is, is, is the tail end of that. So it's not $3,000 a month. It's, um, it should be less than that when it normalizes. How, so for how many months have we been um, in this, this situation, would you say? I'd have to get that information. Because I'm looking, what I did is I did a three month analysis of our spending and it looks like March was um, no better. 
I'm assuming March, I know we got um, kind of double March information. I think March ended up containing March checks and February checks. So that one's 5,760. So I'm assuming that's two months. I'll have to, I'll have to check that. Okay. But our average monthly phone bill is not $2,962. I'll have to check that. Okay. Again, the point I'm trying to make is the library has been closed for three months and these are pretty high cost for no one being there. And um, I was wondering why, so that's why I brought it up. But you're saying somehow we got caught up in a canceled contract excessive cost thing? Greg, so we can't dispute these charges? They did dispute the charges that came way down. When Lisey came in my office, she was waving around something that was like $8,000 or something. It was crazy. So then our monthly phone bill is $2,962. We're saying we don't know for sure. We'll have to check on that. Okay. And then my question is, are we charged for making phone calls? Is it a flat fee? I'm just trying to figure out how we would get to that amount or whatever the amount is. How do we get there? How are we charged? I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to check that. Okay, again, since we're closed, we can't assume these could go even lower. I mean, is that something you might be able to look into? We're swimming as fast as we can right now. I gotta tell you, we, can, we keep trying to negotiate all of these things, but we are drowning. So, you know, we'll look into this. If we see anything that needs to be adjusted, we certainly will. So and as to Pastor Yassel's questions, we have actually negotiated that with the, that was part of our negotiations with our contract. So we are very cognizant of all this. We know we're closed. We're trying not to overpay, but we do not have time to renegotiate every contract. So then, okay. What I'd like you also to provide later is what our phone service what we're charged for. It sounds like a flat rate, whether we're open or closed. So if you could just share that as well later, I'd appreciate it. Okay, then moving on, um, the next one was um, for ComEd, our, our um, utilities. And I see we are now going with Constellation New Energy. And it looks like ComEd charges us $1,800 per month. Um, and um, Constellation New Energy has been charging us, let's see, 5,400, then 4,900, and this month it's up to 7,059. So our electric bill for this month, again, being closed is like nine grand. Is this not on usage? It is on usage. So um, what ComEd charges for is the use of the infrastructure. Right. Yeah, uh, it's called uh, transmission. Okay. And, uh, the actual electricity is bought through a contract for Constellation. In the latest bill, there was a, um, uh, a toll fee of sorts that hadn't been charged, that should have been charged over the last four to five months. And this month, there's a catch up on that. That's why it's a little bit larger than, uh, than normal. All right, so then looking back at the two previous months, while we were closed, our bill is still almost 5,000. Can you- Oh, the bills tend to lag. You know, the bills tend to lag. They're not for a period of time? Well, they are, but see, you have to, you know, that period of time has to end and then you get the bill and then the bill enters the payment cycle. I see. So it's not for that actual month. That's fine. Well, that's good to know. All right. And then um, I see, um, same thing. I see we have, a, we have Constellation New Energy for gas as well. That's correct. And, and our gas bill this month was $3,200, um, which was almost double the other two months. So is that for a particular reason? Um, I'll have to look. Okay. All right. Well, that takes care of those two. And then I had a question about a purchase um, or an item. Uh, let's see. 
It's on page, well, page 204, page 17. It is, um, I can't even read it. Begins with an M. The company that installed a countertop for $1,400. I was wondering if that was something new. M E L. Yeah, it's Mylon. Okay. Mylon Manufacturing. They uh, they created a new countertop for the downstairs kitchen because the one that had been there before had soaked up so much water that things weren't closing properly and that was having gaps in it. So they have rebuilt it. We also purchased a dishwasher to be in there as part of our effort to keep things cleaner. So going forward, we'll, we'll have like, you know, Legos and things like that that we can run into. Ah, dishwasher. Sanitize. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that takes care of that. And then I had some observations I wanted to discuss about um, some of the bills we're paying again, since we're closed, I was wondering if somehow we could negotiate or amend some of these bills to zero because I don't see, I don't see that we're utilizing whatever the purpose is. And I'll just run through them. Um, for example, the um, Niles Elementary District 71, we continue to pay them for the parking across the street. I mean, they're closed, we're closed. Everyone's pretty much suffering through this pandemic. Is there any way they would consider not expecting us to make those payments? I mean, we're all in this governmental taxing body nightmare together. We could check. I mean, yeah, because it's a pretty big lump. And then, you know, I have another question in general. I noticed some of the payments this month are double. Yes, I can explain that. When okay, I went to the thanks. post office uh, two or three weeks ago, I went to pick up the mail and the lady came back out and said, oh, you can't possibly carry all this. You have five or six bins. And mm -hmm. I had had, you know, one bin or two bins at the absolute most every other time. And apparently she went off and she found a whole bunch of things and a lot of the bills and everything in it, magazines and everything dated back to March. So oh. we did have double bills on a lot of things. Ah. Okay, because I, I thought I was keeping track of this, but I couldn't understand. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. All right, then I had another question. C, CCS, Cooperative Computer Service, is that who allows us to get books from other libraries? That is, yes, it's our patron database. It's our materials database. I had a CCS governing board meeting this morning, it's very much in something that we're doing, and it would take us years to get out of it if we wanted to. Okay, so it's a database. I thought it was a server. No, no, no. It's a, it, uh, they have the patron database and they have the materials database, but it is what facilitates the interlibrary loans that you just mentioned. It's okay. how we know if you came in and checked out a book, it's putting your library card together with the number of the book that you did, and it's okay. and that's that database. It keeps track of everything for us. Okay, because I was thinking that maybe they would want to give us a break because they know all the libraries are suffering. All right, um, and then I um, I noticed something called. Oh, unique management. I know we talked about this. It's our collection agency. So, and I'm just trying to understand, we wrote them a check for $152. So what did we get for that $152? They took our accounts and, uh, and are dealing with the, they're, they're trying to get the materials and the money back from those people. They're so lagged that they are trying to collect that for us. We've been doing that for several years. Okay. so we're not paying because they gave us something. We just continuously pay them and eventually they collect money and you'll get it. Is that Correct. how this works? Yes. Because honestly, right now with every, all these people out of work or, or what, whatever their financial status is or, or, or situation, I'm thinking, why should we bother trying to collect money? They, no one has money and we're just paying all these fees. Well, we don't really want to collect money. We want them to give our stuff back. But yeah, I, I, I'm open to that. That's up to the board. No, I'm just saying, I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to rationalize that we're writing these checks because we pay our bills, but the library's not getting anything for it. 
So uh, that's another thing that crossed my mind. Then the mobile phone chargers, I know we talked about, we have four cell phones that we use throughout the library. Um, I don't know if there's any way we don't need all four of them. That would be something else to look into. Um, yeah, it then, turns out there's actually a lot more phones than that. I finally, I, I tracked down what all of them were and there are, there's like a phone that goes in the outreach van when they're going out. There are, I don't know, six or seven. We will assess whether we need each one okay. of those. I appreciate it. All right, and then um, I had a question about um, Visiographic. Oh no, reserve Printer. account. Reserve account. We wrote a check. Well, it looks like the name of the check is reserve account. I, it, it can't be. But what it is, is it's postage, postage. for the um, um, chapter one newsletter. Correct. And it doesn't mean the money came out of special reserves, does it? Oh, heavens no. Okay. We would never, ever spend out a special reserve without the board approving it. Well, no, what I meant was it was postage, and it says that every month. So why yep. does it refer to it as a reserve account? Or every, not every month, but every time you, you pay them. I don't know. That's just what they call it. I mean, I think it's the, like you give them a lump sum and you're getting subtracted off of it. I think that's more what it means. But I, I don't really have anything to do with it. So I could be just making things up. Uh, the reserve account is uh, for postage? Yes. And so, it, um, so you put money into the account. And then when the post office takes your material uh, to mail, to deliver, and uh, uh, they charge the account. Uh, okay, that's how it works. All right, I understand now. All right, that makes sense. Okay, um, those are all the questions I had. Boy, I thought we were gonna save $23,000 by asking CCS for a discount. All right, well, thank you for answering all my questions. You're welcome. Um, Patty, did you have any uh, uh, questions or anything on these? No, thank you. I no. do not. Uh, Karen? No. Nope. Linda? Nope. Sue? Nope. Nope. Great. Uh, Diane, would you take the roll, please? Uh, Diane, I think you're on mute. Okay. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Um, no. Diane? Diane Olson. Diane, uh, put your thumb up or down. Thumb up or down. Yes. yes, we got a yes from Diane. Okay, yes. Uh, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, Susan, you want to give us a, a brief update of your director's report as the next? item well i don't know we were it's almost eight o'clock um yeah. i wanted to tell you about our reopening plans so i'll just real briefly describe what we have in mind um uh we're syncing our reopening plan up with the state so when the um governor's phase two ends um which right now is projected to be may 29th um, then we can start allowing people, you know, that now they are no longer under a stay at home order in the same way. And we uh, can, I can start bringing staff back in. So the first phase is going to be bringing back in maintenance and IT. And they are going to like IT, we've had everything shut down for the last couple of months. And so they have to bring everything back up and install all of the updates that have needed to be made during that whole period. So they asked for a few days to be able to do that because it's just t going to take time for that to happen. Um, so that's the first phase maintenance is going to be thoroughly cleaning the building one last time. Then the second phase um, I call restocking and that's going to be bringing in patron services and technical services and we'll start receiving the materials that have been ordered. So technical services will start bringing those in and patron services will start getting ready to do um, a contact free pickup service, what, what we're calling contact, calling curbside, but it's completely contact-free is what I have in mind, where we'll be um, uh, 
will be first filling the holds that are sitting on our shelves that have been waiting for three months to be filled. And we'll be contacting those patrons, see if they want them. And then uh, we will check things out to them. They'll call us to say, I'm coming over during particular hours. We'll bag them up, check them out, bag them up and put them out in the vestibule. The staff member comes back in the library. Somebody is always watching the vestibule when there's materials out there and somebody just comes in and picks it up themselves. So there's no staff, nobody's breathing on anybody. So that's the next, that's our, gonna be our first wave of service. Um, and then um, I'm gonna be dividing the staff up, the supervisors will be dividing their own staffs up into four teams that we're gonna be using the approach where you work in the building for four days, which is as long as it takes to start becoming infectious. And then you're off for the next 10 days working from home and the next team comes in. So it's a staggered schedule. I'll send you the link to the um, information about that, but okay. that's what they're highly recommending um, organizations and even, you know, they're, they're ha hoping that governments and large agencies do it because it will drastically reduce the number of people getting each other sick if we can do that. And fortunately, <laughs> library work lends itself fairly well to people working from home. So I think it'll be okay but we're uh, working on that now. And then um, we'll probably be offering computer appointments and bringing them in through a separate door so they're not having to walk through the entire library. Um, and then when the state goes to phase four, that will be our signal to start allowing people into the library again to browse the stacks, do an express checkout and you know use the self check, but still have some of the furniture um, out of the way and really still not encouraging people, you know, we're doing the opposite of what we've been trying to do for years. We've been trying to make the library a community engagement place. Everybody come to the library, spend Sunday afternoon with your child. And now we're gonna be like, don't spend Sunday afternoon with your child. In fact, I don't even anticipate being hey, back to full hours. Yeah, it's, 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 we're all in the same boat. It's really sad. Everything we were excited about and working toward, it, we're having to put on hold and getting excited about new things, but so that's the reopening plan. Um, I'm going to be, I have a, a version of it that is going to the supervisors and managers tomorrow morning and we'll let them bang on it one last time before I finalize it and send it out. They always have good ideas. So they, they got to get a chance to get their two cents in. Um, we're also coordinating with CCS and then there is, I think I mentioned before, a study being done on library materials in a lab. It's called, the, they've called it the realm study now and it is figuring out how long the virus lasts on different surfaces. So um, that will help determine when delivery service start restarts and we can start sharing materials amongst the libraries again. So that, those are some of the things that are going on. Um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, if the state stays on track, then we will begin the, uh, starting to have staff back in the building in June and starting the uh, contact-free pickup probably around June 15th, but we'll do it earlier if we can. So Susan, um, then the um, um, residents will be able to request materials from our library. Correct. Say 15th and it'll, that'll rotate with whatever we have on, on hand until C, uh, CSC, CSS, CSA, CCS. Yes, uh, until CCS, until they start the intralibrary loaning. So, yeah. so well, it's really Rails that does it. Rails covers right. all of the libraries, the whole state, so, so well, half of the state. Uh, do you think the uh, online um, um, cataloging will indicate, will, will not allow people to request materials or do request it and then just be on hold for whenever it comes? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how they're going to work that. I do know that they're not going to be allowing people to pick up at a different library. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But that'll be part of it. And then we also will be, uh, you know, accepting people calling to say, can you pull me 10 mysteries for my kid or something like that, doing that kind of service as well. Okay. And we also are thinking about doing delivery service, but we have to see if we can manage that. Sure. Yeah, well, like every, every, every place, it's unbelievable. The extent that it's affected everything in the world. Sure. Yeah. I had a meeting this morning with the village and we're very much on the same track with them. They it's just kind of what you have to do. Sure. 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 
All right. Well, thank you very much. Keep us uh, definitely updated and send you know, as soon as you can, uh, you have those um, procedures set. You send them Absolutely. Off to us. All right. Uh, anything else you want to mention before we go around and ask any for any kind? Nope. All right. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. That's a great staff. Yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, so, um, since we're talking about this, uh, the, the library, um, do we think that our board meetings in June are going to be physically at the library, or should do you think we should do um, Zoom again? Yeah, I kind of doubt it. And they, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe in phase three, you're still not supposed to have gatherings larger than ten people, uh -huh. and you have to allow the public. Okay. All right. Correct. So, all right. So we're looking at so hopefully, boy, this is. This has been frustrating this particular yeah now the internet is really bad tonight boy yeah i know it sounds a little bit better right now so that's good um all right so uh we'll all um plan on having the, the june meetings at least in, in 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 zoom again okay all right uh, am i going to give us a chance to ask some questions I, now i am I okay am. Who's next on my list uh all right you know what i'm going to go back a different order uh, Sue, do you have uh, any comments or questions for Susan on her director's report? My heart is with her because I'm going through the exact same thing in my facility and I know how extremely difficult, frustrating. There are so many okay. um, uh, different Linda? aspects. Oh, oh, okay, I just was basically saying and I just appreciate all the work that they're doing. Thank yep. you. As do we all, thank you. Uh, Linda? No. Uh, Karen? Yeah, I just had two things. Um, first of all, uh, Susan, can you elaborate on that uh, four days on, 10 days off uh, process? Uh, who has recommended that and how is that supposed to work? I just find this very interesting. I wanted to know um, if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, it's a mathematician and an epidemiologist working together, trying to figure out what's the calculation that will get the fewest people sick. And so I, I have a video about it that's about four minutes long and I'll send that to you. But it basically is the first week you would have people working, uh, you know, four days and then those people don't come back for two weeks. So let's say you were Monday, you were on the, you were on team A, team A would be working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then they're working from home for the next rest of that week and the following week, then they're back the next week. And, you know, I was at one point thinking about only trying to be open four days, but I'm worried that that's not enough time to serve everybody we need to serve. So then I thought about doing a two day team as well to cover like Friday, Saturday. And then so it's, it's so it's staggered. You work every other week, basically, in the building. Um, and so it's to, you know, so that it, it's to do with the infectious period, how long it takes before you actually, you can get it here. And then there are like three days until you become infectious. So it's to try to get people back out of each other's contact before they become infectious. It's not perfect. You know, some people might, somebody that's like already on their third day of becoming infectious, who's not being careful during the rest of their life, will still get some of the people on their team sick. But then you can just, you know, do contact tracing for that team and you're not trying to figure out the entire library and then those people will have to be out for a while it's, okay it's possible yeah, we i would be interested in seeing the video thanks for offering to, sending it to us yeah, the second thing i had was about the web page um i'm looking at the web page more than ever just like everyone else because it's really our only window into the library right now and, and i think there's so much available on our web page but i have to say sometimes i i find that hard to find things and I don't, I don't know if the staff can take a look at this and perhaps see if there's any way of making things a little uh, easier to find. Um, virtual programs for June and July, I hear you have some, but they, they don't really jump out at me as I'm looking at the, the web page. So maybe just looking at that. Other things you mentioned in your report, again, this is all interesting. Um, you said Stacy and Judy did an instructional video to promote uh, Ancestry.com. I was looking all over that. I, I couldn't find it. Again, it's probably out there someplace, but um, I think it, it just really helps to make it, you know, to look at the web page as someone who is looking at it perhaps for the first time and really can't find some of this stuff. I, I, again, I think there's a lot of great stuff there. I just want our public to be able to find it. 
Um, here's another one. Um, okay, we've been planning Zoom programs and webinars for adults each day. We post a different program. Okay, that's great, but I, I couldn't find that either. So um, if you and your staff can look at that web page and see you know, if it can be made any more clear where you can find all these materials. I think there's so much great stuff, but um, sometimes it's just hard to find it there or to know it's there so as to look for it. For instance, the Niche Academy, I, I that really I can find that at first, but I but because I read your report, I knew it was there somewhere, so I kept <laughs> looking around for it. It's goofy. Finally, I found it. Yeah. But if I didn't know it existed, I probably would have just given up and, and not even yeah. not even realized it was there. Um, so again, I, I be, you know they, I, it's just so important because people can't walk in and talk to your staff now, obviously, right. and that that web page is just critical for people to get to the stuff they need to know. So again, that's just my suggestion. Thanks for the report. Uh, it was great to know everything that's going on and everything your staff is doing under these circumstances. So uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Um, can I, I'm going to interject something on what Karen had said. Um, uh, and coming from an IT perspective, somebody who's designed some of these things, what happens is that uh, very often you become, uh, you're so close to it and you know how to do things so so readily that it's very difficult to see it from a, a user standpoint. So um, I'll, and this goes for everybody. If you would um, send those specifics to Susan uh, in an email, um, it's a lot easier for uh, the IT department to uh, recognize and to address some of those if they're actually listed out um, and said, you know, I had, I had an issue finding this mm -hmm. particular program or that particular program. It's a lot easier for them to then work on those issues. Okay. Um, so, you know, and, you know, please everybody uh, do that if you can. Uh, and then, um, Susan, how many, um, back to Karen's question on the, uh, uh, on, the, on the groups, how many groups do you think you'll have on this four days and four days, 10 days off? Is that like two sets of staff people or oh, four, four sets? Okay, four groups. Yeah, that's two. what I have in mind right now. Okay. But, right. but I'm, I haven't I'll, met with the supervisors yet and they get a chance to get a crack at this, so. Sure, I understand. Um, so, I, 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 HIPAA might not allow you to, to answer this question, but, do you know if any staff members have been uh, have been ill with it? Two, we've gotten through. Okay, all right, and they've been obviously quarantined, and we know that they're not going to be infectious when they come back. Oh, definitely. Okay, all right, great, very good. Okay, thank you. Well, two two out of uh, well, how many? What do we got? Sixty or so? That's that's pretty good. Hundred and five. Hundred and five. I'm sorry. Hundred and five. Two out of 105 is doing better than many other states. That's actually that is the rate for Niles right now is one in fifty. Ah, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wow. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I'm one. I'm one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, no. One out of seven. I'm one. <laughs> All right. Uh, Patty, do you have any uh, comments on uh, Susan's uh, report? No, thank you. I don't. I just want to say I enjoyed reading it. Very nice. Um, Carolyn, you have anything for us? Or for Susan? Uh, Carolyn, I'm not hearing you. I don't know about everyone else. I got it. Um, Susan, um, if, if after May, as of May 29th, when we go into the next phase, if you can only have 10 people, how does it work for the library? Like two on every floor or something? Well, the floors are big, so I but I wouldn't have more than, you know, I wouldn't have 11 people in the patron services workroom, say. It'll be in particular areas. So yeah. you just need to make sure you don't have 10 people congregating in one area, okay, is that right? Mean? Yeah. And then hopefully they never come together. So. Yeah, you've got it. They, everybody has to maintain their six feet difference and they also have to be wearing their masks and all of that good stuff. But you could have more than a total of 10 people in the building at oh, yeah. one time? Yeah, but not in the same room. Okay, all right. And then I, I also have been getting phone calls, um, and I know we've been doing this for a long time, but I just got these calls recently. It's regarding the um, red lights that we have in the evening to thank our um, healthcare workers. Um, I'm getting complaints that the lights are on all night long. I don't know how you're doing this. I did read about it some time ago in the paper, but um, 
are these actual lights that are on or is this just some kind of image that's projecting? I'm not sure how you're doing this, but yeah, is it it's, costly? It's not costly. They were actually really cheap. It's, um, but yeah, it is, it is lights and they're on a timer. And if the, you know, we, we could certainly just have it be for a few hours. It's just that I think they were figuring the healthcare workers are kind of running back and forth all night, but. Uh, sure, yeah. sure. No, but, no, I agree. And then what I was going to say is if, if, I mean, this is way more work than it's worth, but if there was a cost associated with this, maybe, I mean, it's not like it's $500 a night. I don't know what it is, but it is causing me to get phone calls. So I wanted to bring it okay. up. But okay. if there was a secondary way to thank them, maybe a banner, but, but again, I don't know what this is really costing you. So I just wanted to bring that up. All right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten a lot of compliments on it, so we're we're kind of he not hearing the complaint part. We're hearing the thank you so much part. But well, that's good. All right, Diane, do you have anything for Susan? Uh, yeah, I'll just say a few things. Um, uh, thank you, Susan. You're doing a wonderful job, and it's wonderful how the staff has adjusted to this quarantine and how they're learning new digital skills. It's it's really uh, fantastic. I just wanted to ask, do you anticipate any, any of your staff not wanting to come back to work for fear of yeah. whatever? I'm running a survey right now. It's interesting you should ask. I just, uh, I've gotten 65 replies already and um, it is asking them, uh, they have some choices and one of the, the do you, you know, how do you feel about coming back? And the first choice is, I can't wait. And the second choice is, I want to, but I'm a little worried. And I'd say I've gotten maybe 10, I can't wait. And the rest are, I want to, but I'm a little worried. And only a couple of people saying they will not be able to come back during the summer, which is the next question. So, so far, it's looking pretty good. There are definitely people that, you know, will need to work around children, work around, um, you know, health issues and things like that. And then there are so, a couple that I think will have to just work from home. Um, I have not had anybody say it's just too hard and they're going to resign. But, you know, I would not be surprised if at some point we get a few of those. But I have not been informed of anybody wanting to do that yet. And uh, the other thing is, did you mention anything about the children's department? How are you working on that? That's the toughest one. I don't know what to say. We, I mean, we'll put away all the toys and things like that originally, but yeah, we do have installations in there that the kids are going to be touching and licking and all of those things that children do. And I, I think it may just have to be a little while before we're letting the children in to do anything more than just pick some books and leave again. But that's going to be true of everybody as well. It's, it's going to be a while before the library becomes kind of the hangout. I think we'll probably be in phase five before that happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Thanks. Great. Okay, Susan, please don't bring any items that the kids have worked to the board meetings. That would be, <laughs> that'd be really great. Um, one thing I might, wanted to mention on the trustee calendar, uh, just again, the June meeting sounds like they're going to be Zoom. Um, the July 4th parade I'm hearing rumors that that's, that might canceled. not. Happen. It is canceled. All summer, the oh, okay. village are canceled now. Okay, all right. I kind of thought it was too. All right. All right, no, 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 no parade this year. All right, um, next on the agenda is the secretary's report. Uh, Diane, do you have uh, something to read for us? Uh, Diane, hold on, uh, we're not hearing you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. An electronic copy of the ordinance number 20 01 abating certain corporate fund taxes levied by the Niles Main District Library pursuant to ordinance number 19 04 for the 2019 tax year was filed with the Cook County Clerk by the business office on May 12th, 2020. Great, thank you very much. Next uh, item, now we're uh, moving into our new business. Uh, item uh, number A, everybody there? Okay, uh, we have, uh, we moved at the 
A board of trustees approved the appointment of and payment to Lauterbeck and Amen LLP in the amount of $9,250 to perform the audit of the Niles Main District Library as of and for the year ending in June 30th, 2020. Do I have a so moved. second down? So moved. So second. Uh, second. All right, Patty, second. All right, uh, just to remind everybody, we did have a three year contract with uh, uh, Lauterbeck and Amen that we um, that we negotiated for a, a, a much reduced price from the previous auditors that we had. So um, a, re, a, a renewal of the next year. second year. Second year? Okay. Yes, I believe this is the second year for them then, yes. All right, uh, just, just giving that as a, as a preamble to this. Uh, anybody have any uh, issues or questions on this? Uh, we'll start with Diane. No. No, Carolyn? No, I mean, I don't have any questions. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. Carolyn, anything on this? Yes. Okay. I don't have any questions. I was just wondering, will they be coming into the library to do this audit? Or because we've already had them, will they just work remotely? Will this affect, you know, all these people coming and then it'll affect Susan's numbers for your thing? Is virus going on? I believe they do have to come in briefly, not probably for nearly as long as last time. Is that correct, Greg? Um, so uh, they come out in uh, basically two waves. Uh, the first wave will probably be early August, at which uh, they'll do their preliminary work, basically, you know, kick the tires, ask about things that have transpired throughout the year, kind of an informal, you know, getting the uh, Lay, uh, the lay of the ground, uh, the lay of the land. And uh, then they'll come back in uh, September, I believe, uh, for two days, maybe three, depending on uh, how much uh, work they need to do. And, uh, and then after that, they're out of the office. When they're in the office, uh, we usually have them uh, sequestered in the small conference room in the admin area, it used to be oh. in the office. So, okay. um, you know, they do have to ask people questions from time to time, and it's usually uh, Lisi um, or uh, me or Susan that need to provide them additional information. So it's, okay. you know, it's, it's not a big intrusion, um, okay. you know, but trying to figure out, you know, how to coordinate that with the reopening plan and everything uh, may be a little bit tricky, but we'll, you know, we'll get it done. And uh, with an eye on delivering the, uh, uh, the final audit at the November uh, board meeting as we have in the past. Okay, sounds good. I was just wondering if it was going to be a bigger imposition than you need right now, but it sounds like, yeah, you've got it under control. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, Patty, do you have anything on this one? No comments, thank you. Great. Karen? No. No, thank you. Linda? No, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Sue? No, thank you. Great. Uh, Diane, you want to take the roll? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Linda says yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. Uh, item B? <sighs> is approved the recommended purchase uh, liability and workers' compensation insurance in the total amount of $61,773 for the 2020-21 fiscal year. Do I have a motion? Motion. Oh, second. And motion, Patty, second. All right, so this is uh, uh, on page 34, top page 34. Uh, Greg or Susan, you want to comment about this at all? So uh, uh, this is with um, our through our broker Cook and Coker. Um, the the price actually went down a little bit. Uh, I expect it possibly to go down uh, further uh, because some of the um, 
some of the insurance, well, in particular, workers' comp is, is based on, uh, on salary paid. And if we're not open along, if we're not open all of our hours, we're likely to be paying less in salary to some degree. And we may see an easing of that amount uh, overall. Um, but, you know, these are, um, you know, the market prices. And like I said, it's, uh, it's eased uh, just a little bit, $500 uh, compared to last year. Right. Um, do, these, do these amounts change uh, throughout the year based on uh, worker hours or is this a, like a fixed cost for the entire year? Um, only workers got really Tim. You know, because the way that work, uh, workers' comp works is that they take uh, every dollar of wages that you pay and they assess it at a, at a certain rate based upon the type of job. So a clerical worker, which is, you know, mostly what we have, um, you know, librarians are considered clerical as most of the people in the building are. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll be assessed at a very low rate. Uh, the people who work in maintenance, for example, um, they'll be as assessed at a much higher rate, you know, because of the uh, of the way that the job is right. is prosecuted. Ah, sure. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, on, man, this one, uh, Sue, do you have anything for us on this? No, I'm good. No. Uh, Linda. Nope. Oh, Karen. Oh, Patty. My only question is, do you think they're going to adjust it with the factor having people work from home much? Oh, that's what it said. Yes. It's, I mean, I see it's already gone down. So you honestly think to bring it down even more? Um, the only way that you, we could bring this down is, is, is if um, uh, in the case of workers' comp, we pay less wages. So they would not only be working from home, but they would, I mean, they'd actually have to not be working and be at home. Okay, okay. Um, That's what I thought you meant by that, yeah. that it really doesn't matter if they're working in the facility or at home. Yeah. Okay, thank you for answering the question. Right, Carolyn, do you have anything for us on this one? Um, yeah, uh, Craig, do they ever provide us copies of the policy so we could see just what in fact is covered? Um, I'm sort of interested in the liability. Um, what, do, what do they give us when they decide these are the costs? Well, I think you asked two different questions. One uh, is they give us a bid um, to establish uh, the cost for the coverages that you know, we've talked to them about. Um, and the, um, the policy is evidenced. It's, I get a, well, it's gotta be like a two inch binder, um, which is just full of all of these policies and it talks exactly about what, what is covered and what's not covered. And the policy comes after you accept it or is that part of the bid that, that you say they give you? So um, what we what we do is uh, you know we establish um, uh, the insurance limits. So for example, let's say we want to insure the building for I don't know eighteen million dollars or fifteen million dollars or or something like that, just to shell not the contents. And um, and what they'll do is they'll take that to market and they'll say, hey, insurance companies, how much would you know, would you charge this library to insure their building? And what comes back is, is basically a bid uh, with the best prices. Is it possible for us to get a copy of whatever they submitted for the liability policy and the workers comp so we could go through it? I mean, because we don't really have any details on what the coverage is. Uh, sure, I can send the policies out. So you have an actual policy already? Did yes. that okay? Well, so I, have last, I have last year's policy, and and uh, it's going to be uh, pretty much exactly the same as uh, this year's policy. Okay. No, I'm not looking for last year's policy. I just want to know what this I don't broker... have. I don't have next year's policy yet. Okay. I just want to see what this broker gave you 
to identify our liability policy coverage and our workers' comp, you know, their documents. Is that a possibility? Sure. I'll give you what I got. Okay, that would be great. And then just secondly, um, do we need to have these documents included in our agenda packets online as well, since we're making decisions about this? Uh, Carolyn, Sorry, back Tim. to your other, I'm going to uh, just address this really quickly. Back to your uh, earlier question about agenda. I, I don't believe by law that we can change an agenda. So um, I think maybe you're using the wrong term agenda. Agenda uh, packet. I think you mean board packet? Well, board packet? if you go to the website, it's called an agenda packet and it's under the agenda and it usually has all the documents right. that Per pertain to the agenda items. Right, so, I understand. I'm not sure, I'm not sure we can, I don't know, Susan, you could tell me, I don't think we can actually change uh, agendas, anything pertaining to the agenda after the fact, because it's there's a 48 hour uh, right. limit to what you can change on an agenda so that the Open Meetings Act is covered. So I'm not sure we can actually go back historically and change I'm not yeah. disagreeing that the document shouldn't be included or shouldn't be available to the public, but I don't think we can physically change the uh, anything associated with the agenda. But but I don't know, Susan. You oh, uh, no, I agree with you. But um, you know, there is no legal requirement that we put the board packet online at all. That is something we have been choosing to do uh, for transparency. But we are not required to do it by any agency at all. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, that would be if we were to put all of our insurance documents and things like that online, that would be, you know, a lot of. Well, I'm not asking oh. for all of your insurance documents. I'm asking for whatever this bid is that they gave Greg to determine this partic these particular policies. You know, I, I think we are responsible to the uh, residents to make sure in the spirit of transparency and disclosure that taxpayers can see the documents that we're using to make decisions about spending money. So that is our responsibility. We just haven't been doing it. So um, it's something we probably should catch up with. But if you cannot go well, back- I'll hear from the rest of the board. I'll do whatever the board wants to do. Uh all right, well, Carolyn, you want to make a motion on that? Well, now, see, that's what I think you can't do because you can't. don't have, there's no motion on the agenda no. for that. I could just go on the record right, requesting it. Uh, uh, Maybe put it on the agenda for a future meeting. Yes, thank you, that's, Kat. That's, uh, that is a, what, you mean in general? Yes, let's, let's do that for next sure. meeting. Good, thank you, Patty. Brilliant. Anytime, Tim. Brilliant. <laughs> so that we can talk about that as a, as, as a board. So then Susan will just add it to the agenda for next time, right? Or you, I don't know whoever is responsible. Sorry, I had to mute. It's awfully loud over here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. Uh, Diane, did you have anything on this uh, item? B? Uh, you're muted, Diane. No, nothing. Uh, okay. Um, um, uh, Diane, do you want to take the roll on this, please? All right, Karen? Yes. Karen, yes. Karen says yes. Carolyn? Can't hear you, Karen, when you're blown enough. I abstain. Sorry. <laughs> Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Okay. Oh, he's frozen. Beginning on <laughs> July 1st, 2020 and ending on June 30th, 
Uh, I can make the motion. Second. Can anybody hear me? Good. I second. Need Great. Dane will second. Thank you so much. Uh, so we've got um, the chart on page uh, 34. And uh, Greg, you want to, Greg or Susan, you want to make a couple of comments on this as well? It's a Greg thing. Sure. Um, so these, let me uh, explain about the layout here. There is a uh, small typographical error um, that I'll point out in just a moment. The, um, the table in the middle of the page on page 35 shows the uh, monthly cost, price tag, net cost, and then the total monthly and annual cost of, um, what would it be, 20, uh, 34 enrollees um, under the current plan. So that would be $421,000. In the, in, the, in the table on the bottom of the page, which is mislabeled 2018-2019 and should be labeled 2020-2021 um, is what the bid from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is. It's the same information. It shows the uh, number of uh, people who are enrolled currently and who we expect to enroll in the new, uh, in the new plan. It, it shows the new monthly cost price tag uh, the net costs, the total monthly cost, which will be about $36,978, uh, for a total annual cost of $443,000. It's roughly a 5% um, or a, uh, it's actually a 5.1% or uh, an increase of $22,462.80 over, uh, uh, over the same number of enrollees um, using last year's contract. Um, you know, this is always difficult because, you know, you, you don't know exactly who's going to enroll, but you can take a best guess. And that's usually related to the people who are enrolled for either single coverage or family coverage or whatever now are more likely to be uh, the ones that uh, enroll next year. However, you know, um, with the, uh, uh, the pandemic and people sitting at home and stuff like that, there is a risk and there's always a risk that you may have more people or conversely, you may have less people um, who actually sign up, which will change the cost. Um, you know, we did take a look at how much we would save if we just did a different plan altogether instead of grandfathering. And this is on uh, the next page, on page 36. And uh, the best that we could figure is that uh, we save about $30,000 a year, uh, you know, taking this grandfathered plan instead of taking a new plan that's somewhat like this. Um, so right off the bat, we have about a $30,000 advantage. Now, the second thing that we do is uh, we have a health reimbursement account. And that health reimbursement account pays down the, um, uh, pays down the deductible so that the plan you know, looks more like a $500 deductible plan. And um, you know, so what we did is looked at how much, how much uh, we saved with that particular plan, and uh, with that particular HRA feature. And if we didn't have the HRA feature, but we looked at getting a $500 deductible plan, let's say, from Blue Cross Blue Shield, it would cost us $58,000 more than the combination of uh, what we're paying for the insurance plus what we're paying for the HRA. Every year, uh, we budget about sixty dollars to $66,000 for the HRA. Um, we budgeted uh, $66,000 uh, in the 2019-2020 uh, year. And if you, know, if you can trust a straight line projection, it looks like we may only spend about $43,000 
as we all know, uh, hospitals and doctors are not doing voluntary type um, uh, procedures. So, you know, there's actually less activity that are, you know, that's going through the, you know, going through the plan at this, uh, at this point. So that may, that number may hold. And if that's the case, we'll save even more. All right, I have one question for you, uh, Greg. Why, why is the HR, when you say a non-contributory HRA, does that mean that the employees cannot contribute to it? Right. And, and why is that? I mean, why, why, why not have a plan that the employees can contribute to as well? Well, if, if we do that, that's a, you know, that's a health savings account. Right. Um, you know, which has uh, different uh, treatment under the uh, Internal Revenue Code. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, it's, it's less favorable treatment. Okay. All right. Just because my, my company does almost the exact same thing as this, where they contribute to our HSA and, uh, and we have a higher deductible, but they give us the deductible essentially in the HSA, but we can also contribute to the HSA, which uh, is a benefit to the employee. Uh, it's not, a, I guess what you're saying is that it would be uh, a back end cost to the library if we created an HSA. Um, so, okay. Part, you know, Tim, uh, part of, you know, part of the issue is that to introduce an HSA into this would you know, be a plan change feature, which, you know, may knock us out of being grandfathered. So, you know, ah. it's an additional $30,000 a year. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. There you go. You got me on that. That's fine. It's grandfathered. Okay. All right. Uh, I understand. Uh, all right. Let's have uh, comments or questions on this. Uh, Diane. Start with you. You're muted again, Diane. Great. Uh, you're still muted, I believe. No. No. Okay. No. Not. okay. Great. Uh, no. Carolyn, uh, wait. Oh. Carolyn, you have anything on the? Uh... Got it. Um, yes, please. Um, Greg. Um, so, who is our um, agent on this, or our broker? Uh, it's a company called GCG. They're out of Bannockburn. Okay, so they negotiate with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, is that it? You know, um, it used to be that Blue Cross and Blue Shield, um, you know, actually negotiated, but less and less uh, there, is there room for negotiation. Um, you know, they've, they've completely changed their business model um, over the last 20 years or so. So it's almost like, you know, here's the cost. Um, sorry if you don't like it, but here's the cost. And that's what GCG um, has, has expressed to us, that's the process? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so what they do is they take a census of our employees uh, who are currently on the plan and who are eligible and they submit that to Blue Cross Blue Shield and then Blue, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield does what's called the community rating. So uh, for small employers, um, and the library is a small employer, uh, they look at the entire uh, Chicago community uh, for the most part. And they say, um, based on your census, your average age is X and your demographics look like so many males, so many female, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they, um, uh, they look at what their experience is with similar groups with those types of characteristics. And they say, we ought to charge you this. And some, you know, in the past couple of years, we've actually gone down, um, you know, in, in cost. And uh, this is the first year, I think, out of the last three that, um, you know, that we've actually seen it go up. Okay. Um, so uh, did I read 5.1% is the um, increase? That's what you read, yes. And that's, um, that's based on a so-called community um, evaluation of our employees? 
There like a teaser that's that not that's not underwriting? Are we still going to that phase? No. When you renew with uh, the insurance company that you're with, they basically have all the information that they need in order to, uh, you know, uh, perform some sort of underwriting. In other words, they know that we've had so many people that have had uh, one disease or another and what, you know, what those cases look like. You know, they know if the case is closed or if it's at the beginning or if it's in the middle or at the end. And based on specifics, we'll see uh, uh, what the ultimate um, resolution of this is. This is like. brutal. Sorry, Greg. Um, I heard. I thought. I think we'll see covered you up. Okay. What I what I wanted to mention is, um, I realize we're not the biggest um, group of employees, but I did participate in a uh, board meeting for a another governmental agency, and they actually got Blue Cross to go down from eight to five to then two point nine percent. So um, there is negotiating going on. Um, I, I, I do want to share that. Um, and um, what I'm also wondering about is the HRA non-contributory um, fund or account. Blue Cross and Blue Shield won't work with us on any, any changes to better um, costs for our employees. I mean, there, there's no wiggle room here at all. So um, if you change the features of the plan, uh, what that does is it throws us out of grandfathered status and to get, right. to get the same uh, provisions in the plan, it would cost us approximately $30,000 more than, you know, than going through a, a, a grandfathered status. That's the only option. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that we never seem to be able to make some grandiose changes. I mean, not to affect the coverage, but to affect the cost. And I'm hearing other um, agents are able to do it. So I don't know if it depends on who's doing the negotiating with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but we do have um, an agent or a broker. So that, that's who's been going through all this. Um, also, again, you said they submitted bids to you. Like, where's their documentation that explains the enrollment, you know, what the numbers are going to be based on enrollment or whatever information you were able to give them? Like, will we get a copy of that as well? Wouldn't there be HIPAA protected information in there? No, not necessarily. I mean, other boards get it to review their their um, their uh, changes. I'm sure it's the same type of document. Um, I would be very uncomfortable sharing the census, whether it's redacted or not, with you. Well, other governmental bodies do it. So, is there a difference in the information you're getting and what they get? That this is so complicated. I don't know. I have to see what they what they've been handing out to understand if there is a difference. So you call it a bid? That's what you call the documentation that they give you? Yes. Okay. Th this seems really odd that we can never see the actual documentation. I mean, their names aren't in the policy. That's another document that would give us details. I mean, I, I'm. This is. This is confusing and alarming at the same at the same time. Yeah, Carolyn, you're asking me to opine on, on uh, some document that, uh, that you have knowledge of that I don't have knowledge of and to see if I can match the same thing. And I'm- uh, No, I'm just asking to see the I'm reluctant bid. to uh, say I'm going to match it because of the fact that I don't know what you're holding. If you show me what you want, then maybe I can opine on it. Well, I'm not holding anything. I guess what I'm saying is since the board needs to make a decision based on a new policy, the company who's creating this new policy should be able to create a document that we can read that has details in it, but not specific um, information about each employee. All right, all right, let's, um, Carolyn, if you wanna give a copy of what you had 
to I don't have a copy. I'm just saying <laughs> others have it. I understand, but you said you were on a board that you received uh, this. No, I participated in a meeting. I wasn't. Right. So if you participated in a meeting, then you, you must have gotten that information. No, I didn't get, I don't have the documentation. Oh, I'm not privy right. to it. Okay, all right. So you don't know what those boards were actually looking at. Um, let's uh, move on. If the rest of the board would uh, not wants to see that, uh, that bid, then we can discuss it. Uh, but at this point, let's move on. Uh, do you have any other comments on this? Um, no, I guess, I guess that's it. All I'm saying is, um, right. I, well, no, I do have a comment. Um, I, I'd like to see our goal when it comes to, um, this health insurance policy every year be more about um, a um, process of health care reform. You know, we never seem to be presented with solutions from whoever this company is about options to better our co coverage for our employees or to decrease our costs, which is what I'm accustomed to hearing. So, um, I just wish we would come from that approach as opposed to somebody gives Greg information, he types something up, and there really isn't any healthcare reform options that were given. But that's all I have. All right. Thank you. So, Carolyn, I have a suggestion. Carolyn left. I'm, I need to Carolyn. plug in. But I Carolyn has on. left. Sorry. Actually, not a bad suggestion. Uh, but if you could uh, maybe hold, uh, make that again, like in January, so that uh, uh, Greg and the staff has some uh, um, uh, planning, you know, rather than at the actual meeting, that'd be great. Uh, remind us. We lost you, Carolyn. I'm not hearing you. Sorry, I don't, I don't hear you. Sorry. Um, Karen, you want? Yeah, Please don't unmute me. Uh, I'll respond now. I did ask Greg for information like this a couple of months ago. He said there wouldn't be any. But I'll mention it again in the future. All right, great. Thank you so much. Uh, Karen, do you have anything on this? No. No. Uh, Patty? No. Linda? No, no. Uh, Sue? No. Great. Uh, Diane, would you take the roll, please? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, I'll abstain, thank you. Diane? Yes, thank you. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Great. Yes. Uh, next item is number E, our letter E. Uh, approved payment to Visiographic in the amount of $5,000. $669.90. And I think you skipped one. Skip I think one. you skipped uh, D, like dog. <laughs> the payment. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it all together. I'm sorry. Regarding what, uh, what our employees right. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, uh, letter D is uh, uh, approved the recommended price tags to be charged for health insurance beginning on July 1st, 2020. I'll move to approve that. Second. Great. Okay. So this is the difference between this and the first one. Uh, this is the actual amounts that we're uh, charging the employees. Uh, it's uh -huh. broken down. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, all right. Any, any comments on this? We'll go backwards. Uh, Sue, do you have anything? No, I do not. No. Uh, Linda? Nope. Linda says no. Patty? Nope. Patty says no. Karen? Nope. Carolyn, do you have anything on this? I'm not hearing you, Carolyn. I know I had to unmute myself again. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
So is my questions were about the actual enrollment. So what Greg is saying is the 2018, 2019 chart is actually the 2020, 2021. Um, if I'm looking for. Sorry, yes, for, um, for the previous motion, that's correct. Yeah, I think that clears up your question that you had sent us in the email, Carolyn. Yes, yes. So, but it also then it would also um, it would also show the numbers in terms of price tag. So we're saying thirty-two. There are thirty-four employees in the whole library that are insured. That's correct. Okay. Um, my question was. Uh, how is this percentage that we pay and that the employees pay arrived at part of an agreement? Or? I believe that's what we've had in the past, Carolyn. I don't think there's a change uh, in this uh, current uh, listing from what we've done in previous years. Right. I was. I, my question was, how was it determined? Is there? Is this... I think we probably have to go back to those previous board meetings to figure out what, uh, how it was determined. So then, um, Greg, we're not obligated by these percentages is based on the policy we have? Uh, obligated, it's, you know, basically what, um, what we tell our employees and uh, the way that we've operated the plan, so you know, the only obligation you have is to uh, give the, you know, the employees uh, fair warning. So if they have uh, an alternative uh, resource to draw on uh, health insurance, that they could uh, use that in their analysis, uh, you know, regarding whether or not to continue with our plan. That's, okay. that's, that's the only real obligation that you have. Okay, now what I was getting at is in some policies, you cannot, the, the um, portion that the employee pays or the employer pays is kind of like written in stone and, and there, we could not have created that. But it sounds like this is something the library created. So yes, thank you, that, that answers that question. Um, and then my only concern is that, um, especially that we're, we're considering this right in the middle of a pandemic, do we want to reconsider some changes in the percentages and maybe um, not have the 75 and 90% be the part that we're, we're placing on the taxpayers and maybe increase a portion of it for the 30 some employees? since it's not part of the policy that it, it needs to stay 7590. I'm just wondering if anyone's interested in even considering that. Uh, Patty, you have your hand up on that one? As an employee, not that I'm an employee here, but if I were an employee and my employer all of a sudden came up with this and said, hey, you owe us so much more without some kind of warning, I think I'd be a little bit not so happy. You well, need to give them some- We wouldn't do that, we wouldn't uh, do it that let, way. Let Patty speak. I'm just saying, uh, and is, when is the actual time to decide that? Is it now or is it at a different time? I don't know. These are, I don't know. Uh, anybody else have any comments about whether or not we want to change the percentages uh, at this time? Um, not seeing no. It. Linda? No. Uh, uh, Karen? No. no. Uh, it looks like we want to keep the percentages as they are. Uh, I do want to mention just, uh, you know, you say the residents, some, you know, very, up, very many of the residents, very many of the employees are residents themselves. So it's, uh, it is a, a resident resident situation. Okay. Any other comments on this, Carolyn? Just Can't increase. Pardon me? Pardon? We couldn't hear you. Okay. Oh, this muting drives me wild. All right, so what I'm trying to say is, 
this is, first of all, we should not be discussing any policy that needs to be voted on within 30 days. We need to start taking time to review this information, to get the best we can for the employees and see if we could save money. But we always get documents in our agenda and we've got to hurry up and make a decision. I would never expect us to increase anything to the employees at any time without plenty of warning or notice or explanation. But what I did mention before, and I want to mention again, we should make a point of evaluating all of our benefits at one time, not raises a month or two ago. And now today we're talking about health insurance. And then in another month, we'll talk about something else. We need to look at the entire package. So at that time, we could see where we could save more money instead of just being so rushed. This is not the best way to handle any type of benefit for the employee because we keep, we keep dissecting the total benefit package. But um, I, I'm interested in trying to see a much better policy and then reevaluating what they pay. Um, but um, that's all I have to say then. Great. Um, Linda, you had, one, you had your hand up there, Linda? Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention, um, Carol and I, I understand exactly what you're saying and I agree with you. However, Greg did look through um, other benefits and other companies for us, and we've done this in the past. And we have over and over every single year, as Greg said, it's been 35%. You said that, right, Greg? 35%? Uh, related to? To the health benefits. That's what we're talking about, right? The health benefits? Well, I thought we were talking about price tags. Talking about the price employees. Oh, okay. All right, sorry. Yeah, I thought we were going back and forth. So no, sorry. No, yeah. No, All right. So, um, okay. Then I'll I'll stop. Okay. Right. Thank you. Diane, do you have anything on this? Anything on this, Diane? No. Diane says no. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, have a roll call on this, uh, Diane, please. Uh, Karen? Karen? Yes. Yes, Karen says yes. Carolyn? Um, I'll abstain. Diane? <laughs> yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. We can't hear you. Tim? Yes. And Sue? Yes. Okay, great. Moving on to letter of the agenda. Uh, we have a motion uh, that the Library Board of Trustees approve a payment to Visiographic in the amount of $5,669.90. Uh, so hear? moved. So moved, Karen. Do I hear a second? Patty seconds it, great. Uh, so uh, before we start a discussion on this, let me remind everyone that we have previously agreed to uh, our current uh, uh, schedule of um, 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 not, uh, the, 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 the um, oh, bulletin going out to the, however you wanna say it, the residents. Uh, so at this time, we're, you know, we are just talking about the amount of money. All right, uh, any comments? Sue, start with you. None. None. Great. Uh, Linda? Nothing. Patty? Nope. Karen? Nope. Carolyn? Can't hear you, Carolyn. Uh, we'll come back to Carolyn. Diane? No. Nope. Carolyn? Um, I'm sorry, what was your statement? Pardon me? I didn't understand your statement. What do we know or what were you saying? Oh, I'm saying that we had previously agreed on the um, uh, the schedule of sending the, um, um, the bulletins out to the residents. So all we're really talking about is the amount of money. Oh, you mean from four to six? Yes. Okay. Um, I do have a question. We're approving... 
Physiographic for five thousand six sixty nine and um ninety cents. And some cents, right. Um I noticed in the payments that um we paid um eight thousand nine hundred dollars to Visagraph for on a Visa card. What was that for? And a Visa card? I don't think that's right. Well, it's on the check register under Visa. You got a page number, Carolyn? I can get it. Well, Visa would be probably towards the back. It's V, so it would be on the bottom of the um, check register. Here. Um, and it, it's, it's on the explanation page, too, so it's... Uh, I mean, they are together in the register. Visographic comes right after Visa. Are you sure it's not just that? There is a charge for 8,000, the combined charge of last month's special edition and then the previous month's newsletter. Right, it's not part of Visa. It's right below it. Okay, so what was that for? We just paid 8,000 and now we're paying another five? No, you're paying the, the five now plus the cost for the special edition, which was 2,000 something, and together it's 8,484.87. And then we, we will be doing a smaller edition for next month, so that will be um, less. So that's together with the special edition. So why are we approving 5,000 if we're writing a check for 8,000? Because it's two separate expenses in two different months. Oh. Okay, and then in addition to that discrepancy, um, it is not a discrepancy. I'm sorry, I'll stop you on that. It is not a discrepancy. Susan just explained that it is two different okay. payments. And approval. that's wonderful. Uh, Carolyn, I'm talking now. It is two different approvals for two different months, so it is not a discrepancy. All right, we also have to remember that we pay postage for both of these, and I believe. Um, this, that smaller publication was $1,100, and this one's $2,000. So actually, this month it's costing us $11,900 for Chapter 1, which I think is substantial, and we should be aware of that, whether yeah. it's not important. That's, that's not correct. Susan, you're okay. incorrect. Uh, what's Carolyn, what's you're incorrect. missing? We are paying the $5,669 for the April, May edition, which is our usual newsletter. Then we did the four page special edition, partly because so much of the content of that original newsletter was out of date by the time it hits people's boxes. Mm -hmm. And so that was a much smaller amount, like $2,800, because it was just four pages. Then for next month, instead of doing the full $5,669, we are doing um, something that will cost about uh, half to two thirds of that. So overall, it is a little bit of an increased cost, uh, but not significant. Okay, so this month, with the Visiograph check for eight thousand four ninety four plus postage, are you saying my numbers are incorrect? I don't know how much the postage is, Carolyn. Well, it's listed in our check register. But it's not, that's not an exact amount. Anyway. Well, it's a check register for that purpose. It's, it, it's in the description. I'm only quoting what I took out of the check register. And actually, I'll, I'll, I'll just read it to you. Well, I'll remind you, Carolyn, that you're probably not going to vote for it anyway. So, you know, well, appreciate I'm not asking comments. my questions. You may so ask your question. I want, I want to understand why Susan thinks that this is an error. Um, all right, the um, special newsletter was 1056 That was a, another check. Oh, that's postage, 1056 Postage for the summer newsletter, is that what we're paying for, is $2,400. This is all on this register. Comes to Carolyn, Carolyn, do you have a page number so that we all can share what you're looking at? 
Check number 78906. Great. I asked you for a page number. Do you have it? No, I don't right now, but I guess I can go through the whole thing if you don't want to look at the check number. It's right in the first column. Well, just give me a page. It's on the very bottom. Whatever your page you look. These are my notes, at. but I will gladly look for it. Great. While you look for it, Diane, do you have any comments on this particular item? No. All right. Well, maybe in the future, Carolyn, if you could jot down the page. 7906 is on page one of four. Uh, it's probably page uh, 17 or 18 or something like that. Well, that number's on there too. 16. 16. All right. That's so great. A check there for 8,000. Then there's postage at 78857. Which is also on page 16. And then the last postage is 78890. Which is way in the back. I mean, there's only one entry for postage here that I'm seeing. Okay, but then can you help me? Check number 78890, postage, summer newsletter. <laughs> Is that for a future? Um, summer are, would, yeah, summer is the next one. So we're paying postage for not something we're printing now. Is that what that, that is? Right, that's for the next newsletter. It's an it's a account that they draw on when they send it out. Okay, and that's no, I, I'm, not, I'm not denying that it cost more because we added the special edition. We, it absolutely did cost more to do that. But I, I felt that it was important and I signed off on it. I actually advocated for it. So, you know, if it's anybody made a mistake, it was me, but I thought it was well worth reaching out to the community at that time and letting them know all of our resources. I'm not saying it wasn't, I'm just saying that we're, we're approving $5,000 and we've got 11.9 tied up this month. Right, I'll tell you what. But don't I we, have a question, if I can get past. Yeah, Carolyn, I thought, Carolyn let, me, let me talk. Why don't we uh, have Greg maybe send out an email to the rest of the trust, to all the trustees, uh, detailing the, the the various costs, but maybe we can move on with the approval or disapproval. I'm not finished with my purpose of bringing this up. Well, I know, Carolyn, but you know the meeting is going to be very, very long, and I think you the know, rest of the can I please are, finish? Are, I had a question. Carolyn, I'm asking you if maybe we can just move on and and, and no, have I have a today. question about this newsletter. I well, talked about the price, that it was different. Now I have a question. Okay, but we're not talking about the newsletter. We're talking about the cost, the move, the, the, the item that we're approving is for the amount of this money. We're not, yes. not talking okay, about so the about newsletter. About the item that you want to approve for $5,669, I have a question. And what is that you question? You send out a newsletter because we had in library services and programs. Uh -huh. Susan came up with a great idea to send that shorter one out to inform yes. everybody about our online programs and everything else we are. Yes. Very what good. I'm trying to say is that's effective. Do we really need to send out this regular newsletter, which isn't even targeting what our library really does? At this wow. time, during the pandemic, nobody can come to the library. Couldn't we send out a smaller version and save a great amount of this money instead of just continuing as we used to in the past? That's all, right. all I'm saying. I, well, and, and we are. I said that we are. The next issue is eight pages instead of 16. Good. But why question, do we need to Question is answered. Carolyn, question is answered. Uh, Diane, let's take a vote on this one. All right, Karen. Karen? I, I'm sorry, yes. Thank you. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? I right. absolutely think communicating to the public and our community is important, so yes. 
Yes, okay. Thank Not you. only that, we've discussed this and, and sending this stuff out right. for a certain amount of period and that time frame isn't up yet. Yes, okay, great. Let's move on to letter number F. All right, uh, can I have a motion to recommend the changes to administrative policy 3.1, borrowers and borrowers cards? Somebody want to make a motion? Motion. Yep. Uh, we got, uh, I'll, I'll say Karen made the motion and Pat. All right. So uh, without getting into too much detail, it looks like based uh, what we're doing is uh, discussing or approving a uh, motion to uh, do away with the expiration date. And then uh, number 10 on page 40 to add a line that says library cards that are inactive for three years are purged. Uh, Susan, you want to give us a quick rundown on the logic behind this? Yes, this is a motion actually coming from my assistant director, Cindy Rademacher, who I have in charge of all of our CCS oriented things and library cards fall under that. Um, and, you know, so they go into the database and they, we for years have had them expire at three years so that you, and it doesn't actually even say it physically on the card anywhere, so that you could be trying to do your next thing and then, oh, all of a sudden your card has expired. And um, it's kind of a waste and frustration for people and really quite unnecessary because we have the ability to just get rid of their card if they aren't using it and clean it up that way. So that is what Cindy is recommending. I support this recommendation. I think it's very, very simple one. There's nothing complicated about it. It is the trend in libraries. So a uh, quick question, if the card is inactive and uh, a resident tries to use it, um, what happens on the website when they try to use an inactive uh, card? Is it going to give them a message or is it going to uh, Well, if they, if they try to use one that has already been purged because they didn't use it for three years. Uh -huh. Yeah, it'll just say that you don't have a card. Doesn't exist. Okay. So yeah. then they would come into uh, the have to apply again. and have to apply for a new card or, or have it reactivated. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions I uh, Diane, do you have any questions? No question. Great. Uh, Karen? I do have a question. Uh, Susan, I wanted to know how this works out in terms of um, residents and non-residents. I mean, when someone's card is comes up for renewal, do we typically ask them if they still live within our library district? <laughs> yes, yeah, right now we're making them come in and show their ID all over again. It's mm -hmm. really very inconvenient. Well, I know it's inconvenient, but um, if someone does not live in our district, uh, that is if they've moved out of our district during that time period, does this, this sort of catch those people who no longer are paying taxes to our district if they have to come in periodically and show proof that they actually live in our district? That, that would be the, down, the, the pitfall, but I don't think that's very common. But I think it's much more that we have a whole lot of dead library cards that aren't getting purged and we're inconveniencing people that would like to be able to use their library card but we're setting up roadblocks. And then, you know, they may not bother to renew it if it's like, well, I'm not gonna bother with that. And, and then they don't come in. Well, I don't know. I, I'm just, uh, I have no problem with purging inactive cards after a few years, that's fine. Uh, but I, I, I just feel if we don't try to check and see if people actually are residents after every three years, um, we could be giving cards out to a lot of letting a lot of non-residents continue to have cards. I'm sure it happens every once in a while. I don't think it's a frequent thing. I mean, because really, frankly, anywhere you move in the Chicago area, there are good libraries. They're going to have gone to their own library. There's no reason for them to continue to use ours, by and large. I mean, it's a good library, but... It is. It is a good library. <laughs> well, how far yeah. are you going to come to use it, I guess? It's, a, it's a desirable library, you know. Yeah, uh, it is. But you'd have to, Karen, just to answer that question, please, that devil advocate, if you moved, you know, out to Hinsdale or something, and you wanted to use the Niles Library, you'd have to drive all the way in to use the Niles Library. I mean, then then to return to books, you'd have to drive all the way in. 
Mm -hmm. so, well, okay. You can return you're, them anywhere. If you're part yeah. of the consortium. Yeah, I'm thinking more of, say, programs, you know, because our cardholders get first dibs on going to desirable programs, that type of thing. Yeah, but they've moved, so they're not going to come right. here Are for the programs. Um, I don't know. You know, but, like, for instance, Morton Grove. Uh, someone moves from now to Morton Grove. They might, it's just as easy to stop by here. I suppose. Yeah, that is true. Well, uh, that is a legitimate concern. I personally, I don't think it's yeah. enough to not do it, but that is purely your call. Hmm. Hmm. All right, Karen is contemplating. Patty, do you have more? Oh, did you have more, Karen? No, 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 no. Okay, great. Patty? No. Shaking, shaking her head no. Linda. Me? Yes, you, Linda. You um, are Okay, so I guess my concern is because we, um, I mean, there are areas around here who can't get library cards because not in our unincorporated areas, but there are other ones that they can't get cards. But I guess if they're already here, they move into this very minuscule. I guess I'm for it. Okay, I just had to think it through out loud. Thank you. Sure. Carolyn? Um. I thought we were just allowing the people that live in these unincorporated areas to get a card. But after listening to Karen about, we're not going to check when you want to renew your card. We're going to just assume you still live here. I have a concern with that. If I'm understanding what Karen said correctly. Okay. I, I, don't, I think three years is a really long time to just assume everyone's still a resident um so what you're saying is when you come when you lose your card or or it's expired and you come into the library we don't want to have to prove who we are is is that no if you came in the library we would ask you to prove who you are if you exactly lost your opposite. card yeah we're not handing it out without id that would be that'd be crazy but no. it's really just that uh we don't block their card automatically at the three-year point and force them to come in and show their ID. Doesn't have anything to do with unincorporated. Unincorporated residents are taxpayers too. Right, right. Okay, so then what, what Karen was referring to is after three years, we don't check at all? We do check now. We do check and it's a big pain in the neck and inconvenient for people. And they don't like it very much and we don't like it very much. Oh, okay. I can attest to that. I went, came here to get books and they said, see teller or see whatever, the per person at the counter. And I had to go and re, re show up my uh, license and everything to yeah. prove I was a resident. It's a negative experience. I just try to cut those out where I can. Can you cancel the board meetings? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can Sorry. I say something? Uh, Carolyn, is, did you have another question on that? No, I'm, I'm okay, thanks. Thank you. Karen? I have to say, I, you know, my card expired at a certain point too, and I didn't find it a negative experience. I, I felt like, yes, the library is making sure that, uh, you know, only residents get to be tax, get to be library card holders, and I get first dibs on those desirable programs, and that they're checking to make sure awesome. that the people who have cards are residents. Come down. <laughs> Susan, have you? So have I, you I didn't that? find it an, uh, in a bad experience. I'm serious. So. Oh, we got visitors. Hello. <laughs> it's my father. Hello, father. Hello, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> what is my daughter doing on that screen? <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan, I guess uh, uh, the question then to maybe uh, follow up on it. Have you heard from other libraries that have uh, gotten rid of their uh, expiration dates if they've had any negative experiences? Yeah, I believe it's common. Um, I'm going to uh, Cindy is here, so I'm going to allow her to talk in case there's any two cents she wants to get in here. Cindy, did you want to say anything? She Maybe she. Her, she's muted. She's uh, muted. Uh, Cindy, you're muted. Can I unmute her? No. Cindy is muted. Oh, well. 
Yeah, but I mean, I think it, she had the idea because other libraries are doing it and it seemed sure. like a good idea. Can you All hear right, me but, now? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Well, and, and two, it comes up to at this time because, you know, as the building has been uh, closed, people have not been able to renew. And so we've had to keep rolling, rolling the expiration dates forward. And so we have this sort of build up a backlog of cards that are gonna expire all at once. And so I think this was a great opportunity to sort of, you know, uh, look at this and think about, um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people that are disappointed when their cards all of a sudden expire when the library opens. And uh, so I'd like to avoid that. They've been waiting a long time to get back to their library. And uh, so it'd be great if we could, Algonquin has done this for many, many years um, and some other libraries and, you know, not really had any problem at all. So, you know, when people are, you know, we have cards that are, people move away, they just don't use their card and the card is still sitting around in the database until three years. So it doesn't, um, clean up the database very well to have expiration dates. It just really puts more, um, really of a barrier on the patron who really wants to use the library. And, you know, time is short these days and they've found what they want and they can't place the hold. They can't, you know, do what they want to do because now they've got to make time to come into the library. So it's, you know, I think it's worth giving a try um, trying it out. So thank you for considering it. Thank you, Thanks, Cindy. Uh, I did, has everybody commented? Uh, Sue, I'm not sure if you had a chance. I'm good with it. Good with it. All right. Can I ask one more question? One more question. Yes. Right now that the library is closed, I thought I read somewhere where you can get a library card. So they go online and they fill something out. Do we require some kind of information to check that they're a resident? Um, we have a list of which addresses are residences, but our way of confirming it is either they will come in and pick it up and show ID at that time, or we will mail it to them and that will confirm their address. Right now, during the this pandemic, you're doing that? Yeah. So I'm thinking for all these people who are, 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 whose cards are expiring, isn't there some way they can just get this straightened out online right now and avoid this big... Well, you know, people? Well, I'm sure there is some way, way that we could do it. It just would be one more hurdle for them, but it's not impossible. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. All right, very good. Uh, um, I'm, I'm kind of forward if, if it uh, if the other libraries are not having that problem. So uh, Diane, you want to take the role on this? Uh, Karen? You're muted. Yeah, I, I just unmuted it. Uh, I'm just going to vote no. I think, you know, probably pass, but, but that's my Good. vote. Good. No. Uh, Carolyn? Uh, I'm going to vote no. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Dan? Yes. Kim? Hi. Yes. <laughs> Sue? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so we're on uh, letter G. Uh, we uh, motion to approve allowing residents of unserved areas of unincorporated Maine Township to have short-term library cards. Uh, somebody want to make that motion? Motion. Uh, Pat, make the motion. Somebody want a second for me? Second. Second. Great. Give a second. All right. Great. So, uh, Susie, you want to give us a short, uh, very short uh, explanation oh, of this? Yeah. There are residents that have moved into their houses and maybe didn't even know, I think many of them don't know, that they have moved into an area of unincorporated Maine Township that does not have a library. They assume if they have moved to a place with a Glenview address, that means they go to the Glenview Public Library, but they are not paying taxes to Glenview and they're not paying taxes to us. 
And um, so it's, it's a small number of residents. I think it's, I, the number I saw was 78 households. Um, but what the state library is advising us is that normally they're very strict about this. You can't just go giving out library cards, but just right now for this pocket of time, uh, they are hoping that libraries will give these people library cards temporarily so that they can use the online resources. Um, uh, and the deadline that they're putting on it tentatively is September. So this is really for a very short period, basically to get the kids through the summer. I did um, talk to Dr. Scott Clay, the superintendent of District 63, because that's where most of these students are. And he wrote, um, in these challenging times, many of our families are facing severe hardships. Lack of library access is one of them. Of the For our students who may be feeling isolated and anxious as we grapple with this pandemic, having a library card can open a door to a rich world of learning, resources, and stay-at-home adventure. Our students face a long summer without camps, programs, or sports. Access to a Niles Main District library card would make a palpable palpable positive difference to their lives. We would be deeply grateful to the library for providing these short-term cards to our underserved students over the next few months. So that's the benefit to their families. The benefit to the library is the people up there do get very confused about library service. And this would enable District 63 to say to, say to their entire student population, use this link to apply for your library card and then if they happen to be from Morton Grove, we will send it to Morton Grove. We have no unincorporated Morton Grove. Uh, but it, most of them are going to be ours. And then some of them were taxpayers and they didn't even know they were ours. So it's a way of kind of capturing many of our taxpayers that were not getting library cards and didn't understand where they were supposed to go. The, car, the temporary cards would then expire in September. If the state library extended it, I would come back to the board. But um, I think this would be a very positive thing and I really would encourage the board to do it. It is a temporary thing. Okay, uh, before we have a discussion on it then, um, uh, I'd like to amend the motion. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do I, uh, Karen, uh, talk me through how we do that again? Do I just say I'm going to amend it or? Uh, I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I, I, we can't hear you. No, we can't. Here. All I'm right. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. You could just make a friendly amendment to your own. Is this your motion? I forget who it made the motion. It is my motion. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think that we made the motion. I, what I, okay. what I, you can be ask amended Mary to. If, if she'll make a, if she'll accept a friendly amendment to your motion. Patty, if Patty accept accepts a friendly it. Motion, the friendly amendment to my what motion. is the friendly amendment? Uh, the, the, I, I just want to stay here. Uh, um, uh, to have short-term library cards until the end of September 2020, just so that we oh. <laughs> put the date on there. It just seems reasonable, right? Okay. okay, I I read that and knew that from what I read in her, the minutes, or ah. not the minutes, the packet. Right. So, but yes, that does make sense to put it in there. Right, thank you. Uh, all right, I'm sorry, uh, but it just seemed like it was a little bit more specific. Yes, very good, Tim. I'm proud of you, buddy. Uh, uh, oh, Susan, and then a question I had on that. Um, I think, thank you, had an answer to me before. Approximately how many cards do you think we're talking about? Just a rough I number. think around 100, if that. I mean, it would, there may, hopefully they'll, we'll get cards from other people that are taxpayers too, but, right. uh, but this should be just, you know, around 100 maybe. Okay, for the next. Well, five months, right? Four months. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so going around, uh, I'm sorry, Karen, did you say what you had wanted to say? On oh, I did. I did have a question. So I don't think we've ever offered temporary uh, library cards before. I don't know. Is that true? Or uh, I think back 25 years, maybe before I started, maybe even 30 years at this point, when they were trying to persuade those people to join the library district. Uh, they did give out temporary cards for a, a short period of time. The friends of the library paid for those cards is how I understand it. So they did have a non-resident card for like a year and then they were hoping, oh, they'd love it so much that they want to join. And they actually, the majority of the residents did want to join, but it all has to be contiguous and it, uh, geography didn't work. Okay. All right. So this is the question. I mean, how does this work? Do we even have any 
I mean, this sort of actually goes in with the prior motion where uh, do we have a way of putting an expiration date on a card now? I mean, apparently we did before have an expiration date on cards of three years. And with this one, we would put an expiration date on of, what was it, September 30th, whatever it was. Uh, but since we just passed the other motion saying that we're not going to have any expiration dates anymore, I, I'm not sure how these two. I know. I, I even I, I considered holding Cindy's motion for another month because I thought that would be so stupid. But, you know, it's, it's just the weird times that we're in. So... But yeah, you, you are can. going to have an expiration date for these cards. These cards would have. You an do expiration. have the technological ability to, you know, when someone comes in with one of these cards after September 30th, they will not work or whatever. And then they can pay for a non-resident card if they choose to. Fine. Great. That's hey, it. Great. Thank you, Patty. Yes, sir. Uh, do you what have any kind question? of questions? Uh, no, sir. Thank you for asking. Very welcome. Oh, no, Dan, I think I've I asked you up. Sorry. Any, uh, any comments or questions on this, Dan? Um, it, it, uh, the way it's going to be marketed is through District 63. Is I mean, that it? Or? Yeah. Um, okay. And then. Actually, the children probably won't be able to come into the library anyway. It's just kind That's of. Not. That is true. Here's a card, but don't come. <laughs> wow. Here's a card, but check out the Dragon Who Loved Tacos online. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, I, I like the idea, but it's just. Um, I don't know how effective it'll be, yeah. but I guess just to offer some online things for the residents would be good, or sure. the non-residents. All right, very good, uh, Linda. Okay, so actually we're passing a very similar thing tonight at the Des Plaines Public Library for Maine West, uh, because they have extended this to us because we have many um, Rosemont families that do not have library cards. Uh, however, but we have made a contract for the whole time they're at Maine West. So that's something completely different. We've actually um, put together a, a contract with them. Um, I guess my question is, so they live in unincorporated Glenview, am I correct? Most of them, yeah. Okay, so we're doing this basically on a district school um, geographic area rather than they live in unincorporated Glenview, they should go to Glenview? No, the Glenview is a municipal library and they can't have people that are not, that don't live within their municipality. It's uh, only district libraries can have the people that are because outside. Is, is that the problem that we're having with Displains, why they couldn't do it with us? Uh, dis yeah, yes, Displains is a municipal library, so yes. Yeah. They have really extended themselves because they're not just giving it through September. They're giving it actually for the four years that they're there at Maine West. Very nice. So I'm just letting you know, they have really open their arms wide for us. And they have a full blown outfit of their library. And yes, um, you know, I can think, okay, September, they can't possibly use the library because they can right now digital resources are so pertinent to their learning and their e-learning that, you know, some of these kids, you know, we had to give them hotspots, you know, they have computers, but they really need these resources to succeed in school. Um, so I don't know, is this, I didn't realize there was a portion that didn't have, have a library. I really thought we, you know, encompassed all unincorporated areas. So I don't know. Um, Is this something that maybe we want to think about that for these kids during their time at District 63, we want to move well, and just have it 
be a little bit more. Maybe we could have another conversation another time. Right. Just while they're in school at that time, like they're just doing it for that time. That's it. And then their card is cut off. But yeah. No, I have thought about bringing you guys an intergovernmental agreement, but that's much more complicated. It's a, it's a bigger, it's a bigger discussion. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, yeah, I didn't, I did not realize. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. I really didn't know that. Okay, thank. You. Didn't we kind of touch on this that we were going to talk about it in the future? Back when could be, yeah. Maybe we could we could bring this up back in, again in September right. when it expires. You know, uh, from my point of view, I, I, I love the charitable aspect of it, but I do not want to um, cheat out the residents who are paying for the services, too. You know, it's, it's, it is a True. good thing. So, you know, yeah. there's that. And I, I do agree with that also. And this is basically just for the kids. It's not for the families. It's just for the, it's just for the students, period. Oh, uh, well, that's not what. Yeah, no, I think it would be. I, I think parents. Oh, this get them one is well, for the whole family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your, so your idea family. probably is, but right. Yeah. Ours is strictly for the yeah. for the yeah. students. This is a broader. They just want to get cards in the hands of yeah. the people that don't have them during this hard time. You know, and maybe Displays is doing that too. You know, I mean, I don't know, but I'm. Yeah, ours is a whole different. It's a it's, yeah. it's a whole different level. Okay. Thank you. All right, Carolyn. I think you haven't had an opportunity yet. Uh, I understand the need, um, and I and if I understood Susan's ex explanation, all of these children are in an unincorporated area and not connected with any library. Correct. But then, but then you mentioned when you get them, maybe somebody's Morton Grove, and you'll send it to them. So it's prob, you know. Well, I'm saying District 63 encompasses. Um, all, a virtually almost all of our unincorporated area, but it also incorporate it encompasses these unserved areas uh, by Washington School. Yeah. So yeah. is this to the school or to some? I thought it was a low, an area. It's not. It's to every student in the school. Is that what you're saying? They would be sending the link out to every student in the school, and we could sort out if we if they accidentally applied to us, but they weren't really for us. I see. Okay, so that's how they're okay. I get it. Yeah, it's um. Well, I understand it's a need, and it, and it's oh. it's temporary. So. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I just went through this at my facility, <laughs> and we were initially inclined to do something similar to this, and we had a slew of. Uh, residents who are on staff, who are taxpayers, who felt that it was not fair. That they have been paying for the services. Um, that will it limit services? Will all of a sudden Hoopla be available, that, which is a very expensive service? Yeah. And yeah. that will limit, um, you know, or overdrive stuff, you know? And so it's a, it's a really difficult situation and, you know, I mean, if it perhaps could somehow be exclusive to kids or students, it might be more palatable for people in the community. But, you know, all of a sudden, those folks that aren't paying any taxes are getting the exact same services that those who are um, could be um, unjust to a certain extent. That's, that's just the discussion that we've been having. And so in my facility, we decided not to go forth with this. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Sue. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it as a charitable, you know, we're, we're given the authority to decide how to spend residents' money. I mean, clearly, I mean, that's what it is. It's representational government, we're giving it the authority. So, you know, in my opinion, this is, uh, this is a decision that we would make to be charitable to a select portion of people who are during this, this time that is obviously a very stressful and a very um, special situation. And we're doing it for a temporary point on a time. You know, it's almost kind of like a homeless person comes in and uses the library facilities. Clearly they're not a taxpayer but you know we don't check their ID to see if they've paid taxes 
you know, if they can sit and pick up a book and read it or, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm, But I'm we just, also don't allow them opinion. to download um, things like Hoopla and Overdrive and things like that, that our, um, our residents are waiting in line for, are, you know, I mean, Hoopla is- yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I do. Uh, um, but I, you know, my just my opinion. It's just me as a, a trustee, I'm, vice president. Personally, I, you know, I would love to give everybody everything. But no, I understand. My that. job is trustee. And I'm saying it's not giving everybody everything. I'm saying that we're extending it to a select number of people for a specific period of time. That's how I'm going to look at it. But that's just my, you know, one of seven. Um, Anyway, uh, any other comments on that? Maybe we can go around, Diane, and take a roll. I got to stand up. My ass is good. Hi, Dad. Uh -oh. <laughs> going? Bye. I hope you didn't hear that. Good night. No, Dad. no, I thought he was leaving. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Um, I think we lost Diane, so I guess oh, I'm okay. taking this roll. Uh, yeah, would you please take the roll then? All right. I'm just, just going to call order right. here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn? I'm going to vote no. Diane? I'm going to vote yes till September. Yeah. Uh, Linda? I will vote yes as it's very temporary because of COVID. Tim? Uh, yes. Oh, can, I, can I say one thing else? Sorry. Just as long as you can figure out how we can differentiate and make sure that they don't renew automatically. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. Thank understand. you. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Good. Patty. Good point. Uh, since it's so temporary, it's only oh through God. the paper. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. Abstain. Pass. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. Thank it you. It's longer than September. The answer might not be yes. Okay, Carolyn. Uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I already did you. That's See okay. the number. The names are moving around now in my I list. Know. Okay, who right. do I need? Um. Sue says yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, who am I missing now? Tim says yes. Karen. Sorry, I got disconnected. So I had a. Yeah. Turn my Karen. Okay. okay. But Tim, uh, I'm just going to say something. The reason I'm going to do that is because you didn't go around and get us all a chance to say that yes. That I oh, agree sorry, I apologize. that we can do this. But again, I don't want to renew it. And um, it's just a very limited time. I do think Sue Wilsey made a good point there. And I think we do have to make sure um, our taxpayers get their value. So yes, for now. Okay. Who dogs? Okay, uh, so now uh, we did that. We have letter H. Okay, so Susan uh, and Greg are going to give us uh, a presentation of the uh, uh, 2020 21 budget that they have come up with. Uh, and this is uh, correct. And this is just uh, a presentation. This is not, this is not the meet. This is not the meeting to get in and discuss the details of this at any uh, shape or form. Um, that is going to be the June 10th meeting. So this is given out to the um, trustees so that they can have it in order to uh, analyze it for the June 10th. Correct. So this is actually going to be me tonight. Greg is going to be making his presentation in June. Okay. Um, so uh, I am going to run through some of the things that went into this. But the very first thing I want to do is I want to make an announcement, which is that Greg Pritz in the Niles Main District Library won a budget award from his professional association. It is the oh. Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Officers Association. So congratulations to Mr. Chris. Round of applause. Hey, applause. Hey, applause. Hey, hey, Greg. Yes, Greg. Good job. I'm very proud of that. Good job. We want to see that online. <laughs> oh, good idea. That's great. I, I'm, I'm very happy. Absolutely. Really happy. Good for you. Hey, Greg, we want to see your face. Yeah. And you lost like 80 pounds. So we can congratulate you. Fog on you. My internet's dragging, otherwise I would do it. Yeah. My dad wants to say congratulations. Come on. Yes. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. <laughs> <Take that break. laughs>
in the lounge and over here. I like thank right. you. Uh, let's move along. All right. So um, <laughs> as we began our budget building this year, we understood that the board, you know, I'm going to mute because the feedback is just driving me nuts. I'm muting me too. Okay. Um, so as we began our budget building this past year, uh, we were, we understood that the board wanted to see a reduced budget given the, uh, economic crisis, that that is very difficult for the residents. And so we began that knowing that, um, Greg is the budgeting king, but I made the decisions about where to cut. And so if anybody wants to be mad at me about the cuts, wants to be mad, they're going to be mad at me. That was not Greg. He just implemented what I said. So there aren't a lot of areas that we can cut, and I'm not going to run through everything that's an established expense, but you fixed expense, but you know what that is. And I know too that the first thought a board is going to have in this situation is to freeze hiring. And I am trying to avoid that. I want to reduce the cost of the staff because that is the single big, biggest cost we have, as you know. Um, but I want to have the retain the flexibility to be able to hire where I need to and move people around as I need to. So I, I would not like a hiring freeze. But we did cut really some substantial here. Um, so the easiest cut to make was to eliminate time and a half on Sunday pay. Um, I think quite frankly, we probably would have done that this year anyway. It, only about a third of the libraries do it anymore. And so that, you know, I think we were probably gonna do that. So that one was easy. That was not su super painful. It'll be painful for the people that work Sundays. Um, which I did for many years, and I really appreciated that time and a half. Um, let's see, we will also be running on a reduced schedule until Restore Illinois Phase 5 kicks in. So uh, we'll be running shorter hours. We will probably not be open on Sundays. And so we just won't need as many staff hours during that time. So that's going to lead to some savings. Um, we know that some people will have, be going on unpaid leave for child care but I don't have any figures on that, but we're factoring in that we may have some people in that situation. Um, we're reducing the substitute line by $24,000. So we're figuring that if we don't have enough work for our regular staff, we're not gonna be bringing in subs. Um, and then the, there will be some attrition while, over this coming year. There always is some attrition. So we're factoring in that probably until the library gets busy again, we're not going to be filling most of those positions. So that's where some of the money comes in. Um, Greg will explain next month how he made his calculations. Uh, overall, though, that budget line is cut by $416,270. So that is almost half a million dollars. That is a significant amount of money. The next cut is more painful, but we think that since people won't be going out into the world as much, our circulation of print items is going to go down. So I made cuts to each of the materials lines, uh, except for the downloadables line, which I increased by 10%. I also reduced programs because while we are doing many programs with virtual programmers, uh, using paid per performers, we will not be able to do some of the events we planned. And sadly, one of the more expensive events that we will almost certainly not be able to do this coming year is the veterans breakfast because it just, you know, we're not going to be able to bring people into that tight proximity as we have in the past. Um, we do hope to again, get a grant from age options to help cover some of the costs that I've cut here. And then we may also be able to take some money from the per capita grant to cover it. I don't know for sure if we're getting a per capita grant. I am reassured by my contact at the state library that she thinks it's coming and she thinks that it'll be the same or even more. So I'm hoping to have a little bit of money there to restore some of the things I'm taking out that way. I reduced the professional development line significantly. It would have been reduced some anyway because um, it's not a PLA year. And as you know, that goes up and down every other year. But um, I also don't anticipate spend, sending people to conferences and uh, workshops, things like that. I think they've had a lot of time here to do professional development from home. Uh, I just don't think we're going to be spending very much money on that. So I cut that drastically. It will be a year of learning online. Uh, I do anticipate having staff day eventually. Um, so I did put in for that. Uh, the promotional line was reduced. That's kind of the tchotchkes that get handed out and because we're not going to be going out. So we're not going to be handing out many tchotchkes. It does still include things like library cards and bags for the curbside service and things like that. But um, so there's still some money in it, but I did cut that quite a bit too. 
Um, we do have some COVID related expenses this year that we've never had before. We're having to buy, you know, sneeze guards and I don't know what all else. And, and that's going to be a continuing expense, not the sneeze guards, but you know, the hand sanitizer and all that. So we did add some money to the budget for that. There'll be some extra deep cleaning if we do have an outbreak here. Um, but overall, even with that added to the budget, we have reduced the operating budget by $562,528. I do want to hasten to say, you should think of these as temporary cuts. This is not like our new bottom line that next year you're going to yell at me if the, cut, if the costs go up because as the library gets busier, I'm going to need some of these things restored. But we are making for this year these cuts to the budget. And of course, that is all subject to board approval. So I don't know if Greg wants to add anything now. In general, he's going to be doing his presentation next month and he'll get much more into detail. Mr. Pritz. Thank you, Susan. Greg? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm good. I think you uh, covered uh, all the high points. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, you haven't really had a chance to look at the budget, so I don't expect that you have, you know, there's not really much to question. You really need to dig in. I sent you two documents this afternoon, one of which is uh, this kind of more spreadsheet version of it that's everything all in one place with some notes and then uh, something that looks more like this, which is what he won the award for. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably tweak it a little bit before uh, the June meeting, but those are the two documents that I sent out to you kind of like an hour and a half before the meeting. So I don't expect you to pour over them yet. Uh, Susan. I, think, I'm, I have actually something I want to say. Um, I, I would suggest that uh, we could probably cut the trustee line item, even though it's not a whole lot. I doubt if any of us are going to be flying to any conferences in the next year. So I, I don't know if that's four grand or five grand current, but I would think we can cut that down to 2,500 or something. Um, but if you all agree, you know, at least, at least the trustees would be doing our part, cut the budget. I'm sorry, did you say the trustee budget part? Yes. Okay. The trustee line item. item. Virtual yes. parties? No, no virtual parties? Well, they wouldn't cost anything. We've already got oh, to do virtual parties. Okay. BYOB. Bring your own books. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, we got thumbs up. Uh, Sue wants to say something. I, I do have a question about the Sunday hours. Um, does that mean that those folks that are regularly scheduled on Sunday will see a drop in their compensation? It does, unless they are able to work the shifts where we are open. But the people that were getting the time and a half, yes, that's just going to be a drop in the compensation. That's kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, most other libraries have already done it. It's, it's a ripping off the Band-Aid thing. Well, I'll just mention, and it, it, you know, it's up to you guys to make that option. But when we are doing this in my facility, what we're doing is doing a um, examining what that amount was and we're just basically filtering it and putting it back into compensation for them. I mean, we're looking at it to try to get the salaries up higher. I mean, the, the hourly rate up higher so that we can eventually get to that $15 an hour mandatory rate. And so I think if you actually could then take that Sunday, um, you know, additional, uh, money and like kind of roll it into that hourly rate you might be able to move it up a little bit further you won't reduce the budget really but when you have to get to the point where you have to increase the salaries to that fifteen dollars an hour you may be a little bit closer so just something to think about yeah. so it won't be such a hit you're saying when it does hit yeah makes sense Okay, anybody else got a comment? Not seeing any hands. Seeing a lot of yawning. Sorry. 
All right. Well, okay. We'll mull over it. And we got our June um, 10th meeting uh, to uh, get into the details of this. I heard, I heard what Sue said. You know, you might, I guess you might want to also consider um, stepping that down, maybe maybe uh, instead of 1.5, but one and, a, one and a quarter or something for a time. And then, um, I don't know, you know, something. Okay. Well, that was great. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for the documents. Thanks, we'll look all right. Well, Greg did all the hard work. Yes. I just did the painful work. <laughs> and again, congratulations, Thanks, Greg. Good for you. We want to see that on that wall behind next time. Yeah. Oh, can I ask a question? Can I yep. ask one thing? Absolutely. Um, I did kind of, I kind of glanced at a 50 page document um, with the budget that Greg prepared. It's really wonderful. Um, are we going to be getting a copy of that or should we? Do yeah, when it's finalized, we can send it out in print. Yeah, because it's hard to read that stuff on laptop screens and tablets. Yeah. I had That's why I was coming here. And, uh, well, we have it, you know, in enough time before the meeting, June 10th. Yes, ma'am. June ma 10th is our next meeting. Correct. Yeah. Okay, because that'll take some time to read that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so the next item is to go into executive session to discuss appointment, uh, oh, employment, yeah. compensation, right. discipline, performance, dismissal of specific employees uh, in the House Main District <laughs> Library. To uh, I, I <laughs> vote it's too late. <laughs> yeah. It's too late. And yeah. I can't kick my dad out of an executive session. No, that's you know, why. Oh, he screwed over. And it, I mean, it's almost 10 o'clock. I don't know what to say. He's right, right. here. I'm hearing a revolt. <laughs> it's just very, you know, it's sort of stressful listening to this squawking noise. It is Do we know what this hours. executive session is about? Uh, we're, we, we won't. We Confidential. Won't. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, oh. you have, to, you have the document. You're, right. you're asking us to like, you know, do this, and we don't even know what we're going to be yes, addressing. Absolutely. All right. I will say that this is my fifth anniversary as the director yes. today. This is, this is what. Yay! I'm congratulations. Doing. Awesome. Oh, we're all going to give you a lot of applause. I saw that on my Facebook timeline. Yes. I think at the moment the best thing we could do. Is let you go home right now. Yes, adjourn. I, I do. I do want to give Carolyn the opportunity. Oh, hey. to up yes, I, I, I'm not. I'm not forgetting. <clears throat> so you had talked about a document uh, pertaining to last. What's agenda? Oh, Remember, yes. Well, we did. We do want to say that I don't. I don't believe we can change the agenda. Right. Right. Um, you know, uh, pursuant to the. So, but there's nothing that says we can't uh, uh, add an additional link. Uh, on the website by the agenda area, I'm thinking, or any of those documents that the board. Well, would that make. you mean, won't that complicate it? Well, I, I mean, I think we can add documents to a board packet retroactively, um, but I do think the board will have to have a discussion about when you want that done because we historically have not added policies and uh, you know long longer documents. It's so yeah, you'd have to figure out when we should be doing that. Oh, All right, Diana. 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 Oh, I'm just so, just talking about this at a later date. Yeah. Right. Like put it on an agenda for okay. another time. You got it. I did not want to short change you and I No, thank you. I appreciate it. Showing the world and I'm responsive. All right. Okay, so uh, I have a, a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Karen makes it. Uh, Patty is seconding it. Uh, uh, Susan, will take the roll, please. <laughs> I am here. Diane's back. Take the roll, Diane. <coughs> You're muted, Diane. Karen. Karen. I'm just going to say, Diane, yes. that everybody's going to say yes. But go ahead and take the roll. Karen. Yes. yes. Carolyn. Yes. yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Good, good night, night, guys. This was ridiculous. Good night. Go in peace.